Hey everyone, welcome back to the Makers Gonna Learn YouTube channel. My name is Alicia. I'm the craft producer here with Makers Gonna Learn. And today we're gonna be making a 3D paper project. So this is something that is gonna work perfectly for all of the men in your life or even the women if they're really into baseball caps or sports or anything like that. This gift is very versatile and it's homemade. So we're gonna walk you through step by step on how to cut and assemble this hat and then I have a bonus tutorial at the end on how to make some gold stickers to go on the bill of your cap. If you all are ready, let's go ahead and jump right into it. So this is what we're going to be making today. Is this not the cutest ever? It's a little baseball cap. I'm going to be showing you a haul how to make these little gold stickers. I feel like this is such a fun touch. And then we're also going, also going to be adding this little accessory right here. And then as you can see, this just opens up and look, there's like a little area to put a gift or candy or something like that. I just love how this turned out and it's so fun to make. So we are going to go ahead and get right into it. So really when you're making this hat, if you're not going to do any of the accessories, you can make this with such minimal supplies. You're basically going to just need at least three pieces of cardstock of the similar color. I've got a light grip mat, which we use for all of our cardstock crafts. And then I have an ATG. This is a double sided tape adhesive gun. I've got some precision tip glue. Now zig pin is something we use a lot of, but tacky glue is good if you're needing a little bit more glue, if that makes sense. Like if you need a little bit more heavy duty, these are both gonna work. You just need a precision tip glue stick. I've got a spatula or a bone folder is going to help. Just something to help you lay down those edges on the creases really well. I've got a brayer and then I have a hot glue gun. Okay, so this hat is an exclusive Maker's Going to Learn file and I love this file. There are a lot of pieces, but they're really, really not that bad to assemble. If you've never done a 3D paper project, I don't know that this is necessarily a beginner project, but you're definitely going to get a dose of all of the different things that 3D paper crafting entails. And so basically whenever you pull in any of these paper crafting images, a lot of times you're going to need to like change the lines to score lines and things like that so that your scoring stylist can actually make the creases for you, which allows the paper to bend easier. But with this file, I'm going to zoom in so you all can see, you actually will not be needing to use the scoring stylus because we have put these perforated edges in. And so your fine point blade is just going to go through and cut all of this. Now I do recommend going ahead and putting in a fresh fine point blade to make sure that your cuts are going to be super clean for this project because we do have a lot of intricate cuts. You can see on the teeth on the sides of these are going to be very detailed and we just want to make sure that we're not using a dull blade when we're cutting paper because we need a good clean cut. This is everything you're going to need. Now, the project that we're creating today, I only use three pieces of cardstock and that's because that's how much we need to accommodate the size of this image. Now, depending on how big that you want your hat, um, is going to depend on how many pieces of cardstock you need. So the hat that I showed you all earlier, this is the exact size. And you can see right here, if I go pull in a square, this is how I know how big my project is going to be. I'm just going to pull in a square and we're going to measure the base of it because this is pretty much the biggest of the project. Like this is the biggest area of the project. What I like to do is just turn this to a guide and then I will take this square and drag it to the width and height of that little area. And then you can see over here, it's like a six by eight area. So that's about the size of the project. Now, if for some reason you wanted a bigger hat, you could resize the square to however big you were thinking. Like if you wanted a 10 inch by seven inch piece, you could resize this, but you need to select everything. You cannot just resize a portion of a paper project. You're always going to need to resize everything all together or we'll totally throw off everything in your project. So we're going to resize it together and then you can just see if this little hat will fit right in that square. 
and then everything is sized proportionally and then you could go ahead and cut it. But we're gonna do the seven inch hat today. I just wanted to show you all that in case you needed to make a smaller hat or a bigger hat. I wouldn't go too much smaller than the seven inch just because these little teeth on these paper pieces get really, really fine and it's hard for your machine to cut sometimes. So I'm gonna put this back to the seven inches and we will go ahead and start cutting everything out. So the next thing you're gonna do is select make it. And then you can see right here, I've got four mats ready to go. I'm gonna actually put this single piece onto a different mat because I only wanna cut on three pieces. I mean, why waste an entire sheet of cardstock if we don't have to? So I'm just gonna move it on to this one because I can see there's a little bit of space right here and we can move stuff around to make it work. And then I'm just going to put this down here in this lower corner and you can see this is very close right here. So I'm gonna rotate this and we're just gonna sit it right there. And so everything fits. You can see there's nothing on this fourth mat, so nothing's gonna cut off of that. We're only gonna need the three sheets of cardstock. So go ahead and select continue. And we are using an Explore 3 today, but you can use a maker or whatever die cutting machine that you have. You don't necessarily even need a Cricut to do this project. You can use a Silhouette or whatever die cutting machine that you have on hand. Um, I, am, I have played around with two different cut settings for this. I thought that the intricate cardstock cut setting was gonna be my best bet, but honestly, the medium cardstock setting worked much better for me. And so I've just been sticking with the medium cardstock, which is 80 pound cardstock on default pressure. And we are using the Ashley Falco cardstock today. So this is the red from the Celebration Warehouse, which is the Ashley Falco brand cardstock. We absolutely love Ashley Falco, she makes a shed proof glitter that is wonderful. If you all are curious about this cardstock and you're wanting to try it out, I've linked it below for you all. But it cuts so well. And this is a color core cardstock. So when I say color core, I'm meaning that the inside of the paper is the same color as the paper. So there are lots of papers that are red on the outside and they'll be white around the edges. And you can tell if you just look at the edge of your paper but these are color core, which is great for paper crafting because then you can't see all of those themes. And the reason that you wanna do color core, you can see on here, all of these edges would be white on the hat and we really do not want that. So color core is gonna be your best bet. So I just used a brayer to make sure this is down really well. And I am using a light grip mat because we're playing with cardstock today. We can use anything stronger than a light grip mat mainly because it's gonna fold our paper and it's just gonna mess everything up. And then we will go to our Cricut and go ahead and load this in. Like I said earlier, I've got a fine point blade in here and I just put a new blade, so I know that it's gonna cut really well. Okay, so you can see here, some of these little pieces got bunched up, which is gonna happen sometimes. Um, it really just depends on your cut settings. And I could go in here and kind of fiddle around with the cut settings and see what's gonna work better. Like I said earlier, I did try to use the intricate cut setting, but honestly, it did worse right here with these little teeth, which makes no sense to me, but it is what it is. So the medium card sock is what worked the best. When you go to remove these, we like to go with gravity around here. I'm just gonna slowly bend my mat back and let all of these paper pieces slowly come off of the mat. Now you'll have these little pieces right here and we will remove those in just a second, but I'm gonna detach all of these other pieces. Okay, and when you're doing paper crafts, make little piles so that everything is in its own area and you're not losing any of your pieces because there are lots of pieces for 3D paper crafts. Sometimes I like to take a burnishing tool to pop off all of these. You can even use a spatula. Okay, and we need all of those little rings. So keep up with those. So I've got everything cut out now. Everything is in its own little pile, which makes my heart happy because now I can assemble and have all of my tools ready. To so the first thing we're gonna start with is the base of the hat, so where the bill is. 
and I've got these two pieces right here that we're going to need to use and then I have these two pieces and then this one we're going to save just set it to the side we're going to be using it but we just don't need it for the initial starting of the hat. So on the first hat that I made I made the mistake of using glue. Now I put tacky glue in between both of these and put them together. The problem with using glue, especially in paper projects, is you have to be very particular about what type of glue you use because it can get thick and when it dries, it's lumpy inside. Even if you smooth it out, it just, it dries, it'll curl your paper sometimes. And so that's where the ATG gun comes in. So this is the advanced tape glider. It's just a double-sided adhesive tape dispenser. You just hold this little trigger in and we're just going to line the hat with ATG. Now you wanna make sure that you're getting all the edges so everything is very well adhered to one another. And if you've never used an ATG gun before, they're very, very handy if you're getting into paper crafting, um, but they can be kind of a learning curve when you first learn how to use them, especially when you have to go to replace the tape um, but once you figure it out, it's really not that difficult. So these are super handy for paper crafting. I use these on every paper craft that I make. Okay, so I just line the whole piece and then we're gonna line this up as well as we can. I like to go to my edges, okay? And you can even use your brayer to go over top of this. If you don't have a brayer, you can really take your burnishing tool and make sure everything is nice and together. And you all wanna make sure everything is lined up perfectly or as, as perfectly as you possibly can get it, especially with these paper projects because everything fits together like a puzzle piece. So these two pieces, we're gonna put these on later as well. So just sit those to the side and we are gonna go ahead and move on to the next step. So. The next thing we're gonna be making is this little inside piece right here. So the border, and that is all of these pieces right here, okay? So the bottom pieces of these have little tabs. So there's a little tab here, and you can see there's a perforated edge. So those are gonna go in, and then these little teeth are gonna go in as well. So I'm just gonna fold all of them so they're ready to attach to one another. Okay, now we need to attach them together. And so what I'm gonna do, you're just gonna work with two pieces at a time. So I'm just gonna take a piece, I'm gonna flip it over. So all of my little teeth are looking up and my thing and the tab is pointing up as well. And I'm just gonna add some ATG right here on this flat side that doesn't have any teeth, okay? And then we're gonna take another piece. You can see the teeth right here are gonna connect to this flat side. So teeth side to flat side. And I'm just gonna line this up. You can flip them over if you need to, to kind of line it up. And you're also gonna be kind of bowing them a little bit, just like this, okay? And then we're just going to push the teeth into that ATG on the back side of the other piece. The good thing about ATG is it's very forgiving, so I can kind of pull up the tabs if I don't get it perfectly lined up on the first try. Okay, so you can see that they're attached, just like that. This is what it looks like on the outside. I'm gonna take a bone folder or just a spatula and we're gonna push down on that seam to make sure everything is adhered really well to one another. And then we're gonna repeat the process. So I'm gonna walk you all through that process one more time and then we will just speed up the video because it takes a minute um, and it's gonna take you all just as long. So just be patient. Paper crafts are very much just kind of like a chill and make your craft. It's not something you wanna hurry through, mainly because you wanna be as precise as you possibly can be. So, like I said earlier, teeth side to flat side. So I'm gonna apply the ATG to my flat side. And then we're gonna push the teeth into the flat side. 
and you're gonna need to bow them a little bit, that way they mesh together well, because this is the hat is rounded. And it's easier for me to come onto this side and see that my seam is lined up. And I'm just pushing those triangles in to that ATG really well, making sure there's no gaps and that everything is lined up. And you can flip it over, take your spatula, and just kind of run it along the edges there. Make sure everything is lined up on the outside and then just keep working your way around. Okay, so I've got all of my pieces together. I just need to connect this end piece. So all I'm gonna do, same thing, I'm just gonna put some ATG here and then we're gonna connect this left side to the right side, the same as we connected all of the other pieces. Okay, and so this is the inside of our hat and you can make sure that everything's lined up by kind of putting it on to the hat to make sure all the edges line up and it looks like they do line up really well and we can go ahead and attach this to our hat now you can add the ATG onto here or if it's easier you can add it onto the hat here um, it's gonna be personal preference let me see how I want to do this because it'd be easier to put it on the base of the hat honestly but like these front three pieces, it's hard to know where to put it. What I could do is hold this here and take my little hat. What I think I'm gonna do is go ahead and add on this middle hat brim right here, this piece. I'm gonna go ahead and attach that. That way I've got somewhat of a guideline and I can put my ATG all the way around this border. So I'm just gonna put some ATG on the back of this guy. I'm just giving myself like a half an inch allowance about all the way around, just kind of eyeballing and making sure everything is lined up and then I'm gonna burnish that down really good. And we can line this back up and make sure everything fits. I really wanna put it flush to the back of this because I don't know, I'm just eyeballing this up here, so I really don't want to trust that measurement yet. So I'm lining it up to the back of the hat, and then check the front, and it looks like it's lined up really well. So I'm just going to add ATG all the way around this hexagon. So we've got ATG all the way around. I'm going to spin this around so I can line it up really well. And I'm just going to line this back edge up with the back edge of the hat. And take your bone folder or spatula and push that down really good on that back tab. And then just slowly work your way around pushing each edge into the paper. Okay, so everything is on here. We are good to go on to the next step. So the next portion would be for us to go ahead and apply our the rest of our bill of our hat. So we can just put this right here. And I actually kind of want it to slide up under there. Um, so I'm going to just add some ATG to this and then we will just slide it right up under that rim. We wanna make sure it's the same distance away as the first piece. Okay, and you can just bray it down. So we've got the rim of the hat completely done. I'm gonna go ahead and put this middle insert piece that I said to save. We're gonna put that in here. I'm gonna add the ATG to this piece and try to put it along the edges so it really stays down and also put some in the middle. 
So it kind of nestles down in there. You may have to bow the paper to get it to fit. But then you can press it down and just take your spatula. Make sure all of those edges are pressed down firmly. Okay, the next thing we need to do is make our lid. So the lid is very similar to the bottom half. It's a little bit more difficult because it comes to a point at the top but you've got to remember, if you have any little mistakes up here, we're going to have this little dot on top, so it's going to be able to cover it up. So I'm just going to bend all of my teeth, just pre-bend all of your teeth, that way they're ready to go. Okay, so we've got this back piece. I'm going to save him for the end, but we can go ahead and start attaching all of these pieces. So I'm just going to flip one over and I'm going to apply ATG all the way down this edge. And then you can see these are very, very curved. And so I'm gonna flip this over. So I've got my teeth side going to my flat side just like we did before. And sometimes you're gonna have to bend this. So I'm going to start at one edge, lining up those edges, stick that first triangle to the top there. That way it has like an anchor point. And we're just going to bend these together. So it's going to kind of bend and grab at the same time. So we're bending the paper and pushing the triangle into that back piece of ATG. You can see here these are not going to line up unless I bend them. So give yourself some grace. It just takes a second to kind of get a feel for it. But if you start at the top and work your way down, you'll be able to get it. Sometimes even flipping it over and trying to adhere it this way will help. It's just harder to see that you're lining everything up on the outside. So you can kind of feel for it with your finger if you need to. I'm gonna actually attach that bottom piece and then I can go in here and make sure, you can see there's like little holes kind of in the middle. I can just take my hand on the outside of there and push it in and push it down onto that tape. Okay, perfect. And then I'm gonna take my spatula so I'm just making sure that everything is attached down really well. And then you're just gonna keep working, doing the same exact step. So we're gonna apply the ATG to this furthest edge from top to bottom. And so I'm gonna just start from one end and work my way up. If the, working from the top didn't work for you, start at the bottom and work your way up. So it's going to start getting kind of pinched together, but we've got our ATG on here, so it's going to allow us to flex it out a little bit more. And we only have three more pieces, so I'm just going to keep working my way around. So you see right here where it's so close. I'm having a hard time getting the ATG all the way up here. I could technically use the glue, but it doesn't dry as fast as I want. So I'm going to put ATG on the have left before them to connect to this larger section that we've already made. This way I'm having to pull apart the pieces I've already attached, if that makes sense. So I'm going to apply a T all the pieces that I haven't yet put onto our bigger piece. Okay. okay. And then I'm just gonna try not to touch that sticky part. I know it's kind of right in the way, but I think it's gonna be easier for us to adhere all of our pieces together with it already on there.
So you all can see it gets very <laughs> bunched up, but do not be afraid to stretch it out. Um, I've got my last piece here. So remember, we're going teeth to smooth side. Just take your time getting these pieces together. We're almost there. Okay, and then now I'm just gonna attach this side to this final piece. Okay, so this is what we are left with. So you can see everything is attached. You can go through and make sure any triangles that may have came up are just pushed down inside of there. And then I'm just going to make sure everything fits on here and it does, which is great. And then the next thing that we're gonna to need to do is apply all of our little tiny pieces. So I'm actually just gonna move this base so we don't accidentally glue anything together. And I'm gonna use some reverse tweezers for this. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of hot glue on the top of my hat. And then we're just going to attach it. I'm using reverse tweezers for this part. These are very handy for paper crafting. And you can actually flip this over and use your tweezers to push those triangles into that top little dot. Just make sure you don't actually glue your tweezers to your piece. And then I can use my Zig glue pen. This is like a glue, this is like a paint marker, but it's got glue on it. And you can just dab a little bit on there and then we're gonna attach that to this bigger one. Okay, and then I'm gonna take all of these little tiny rings and these are gonna be attached to all the holes. Just gonna put a little bit of glue and then we're gonna place them. Okay, and we've got our last and final piece that is going to attach back here. And so you can use hot glue or a zig pin either way. I'm just gonna put a piece, a dot of hot glue here and then two small little dots here. Remember, hot glue dries quickly, so work fast. And we're just lining this up with that edge. Just like so. And then you have completed the entire hat. Now, this could be it. This could be all you do. It's still so cute just like this. But we want to add some embellishments. So I'm going to show you all how to create um, these gold stickers. And then we have this image right here that you all can cut out for yourself if you want to. If you want to put like a sports team on there, you totally could. The options are endless. Okay, I'm going to show you all first how to make this cute little world's best dad. We're just going to type out the word dad. And I am using the vintage jeans font. This is a Maker's Gonna Learn font. If if you all aren't familiar with Makers Gonna Learn, we do offer thousands of cut files as well as fonts for you all to use commercially if you like, if you are a craft seller, which is really great for those of you who are into selling your crafts. Um, but these fonts are available on the Makers Gonna Learn website. So I'm just using a vintage font here and I'm gonna do number one. You can use whatever font you want. If you wanted like a more varsity font, you could totally do that. I like this vintage though. I'm gonna change this to red and then I'm going to duplicate it. And we're gonna be stacking this HTV. I'm gonna make this white, okay? And then we need to add worlds, so worlds and this font I'm going to use, I'm going to use Fierce Sights. We're gonna shrink this down. I'm gonna cut this out of red HTV as well. 
And then we're just going to use this curve feature up here and curve it around the D. Okay, and then I'm going to select it all and we're going to add a slight offset, probably like a 0.15. Let me see how that looks. That's a little bit much. I'm going to do slightly smaller. Okay, now I don't want all of these little holes, these gaps in between everything. So you can select your offset in the layers panel. Go to contour down here on the bottom right and we're going to hide all contours. Okay, beautiful. Now, this is for the label. I'm going to show you all quickly how to make these stickers as well and then we will print and cut and do all of that together. So for the stickers, I'm just going to use a basic shape to start. So just pull in a circle. Okay, we're going to change that to gold. This is our gold section. And then we're going to go to our offset function that we just used. And I'm going to hit negative 0.13. So this is going to give us an actual inset. Okay, so now you can see we've got this black circle in the middle. I'm going to take this down here. We're going to grab another basic shape, just a rectangle. Unlock it. And this will allow us to move it however big we want. I just need it right through the middle of this circle. I'm going to select both and make sure that it is perfectly centered. So you go to align and center. We're going to combine and subtract. Okay, this is going to give us that little cutout right in the middle of our circle. And then you can select these both and align them again. So that gives us that. Then what we need to do is add a star. So I'm just going to add a star. And listen, this is totally just for funsies. Like you all do not have to take all of these extra steps. I just feel like these little stickers are so standard for these hats. It just made me happy to add one myself. That's why I love having a Cricut. I'm going to center that up. And we're going to actually add a tiny offset this star so like the tiniest offset 0.03 make sure it's not negative and then I'm gonna hit apply and so you all cannot see it here but I can see that there's an offset over here in the layers panel so we don't want the star selected we just want the offset selected and then this little portion right here and we're gonna slice that star out okay so remove all the portions you don't need. I'm going to change this star to black. Okay. And then we can add in whatever text that you want. You could do to and from um, and then put in the names. I'm just going to put made with love for data. So made with love for and then we're just going to shrink this down really tiny. I'm going to change it up here. And the font is actually going to be Hardy Hank. This is also a Maker's Going to Learn font. So I'm actually going to need to download this Hardy Hank font. So I'm on the Maker's Going to Learn website. I'm going to fonts and I'm going to type in Hardy Hank. Okay, and then we're just going to select this little download icon. It's going to go into a zip folder, double click the zip folder. It should pop up a little box. If it doesn't for some reason, go searching through your downloads and you'll see it titled hardyhank.otf. Double click that, install your font. And then we're going to need to reload Design Space. That way it loads it into Design Space so that we can use it. So make sure to save your project, save what you've been working on which I just did, and I'm going to hit view up here on the top left and reload. And then I'm going to select that, those words that we chose, go to my system fonts and type in Hardy. There is our font. Now the letters are kind of bunched up and since we're printing this so small, I'm going to add some letter spacing. I'm going to put a two for letter spacing. You can see that gives us a little bit more space in between each letter. That way it's a little bit more legible. You could even do it a little bit more if you wanted to. And then we're going to shrink it down so it fits right inside here. I'm going to duplicate it, 
and we're just going to type in data. And I'm going to make this as big as I can. Okay. I'm going to change these both to black. And then I'm going to select everything, go to align, and center horizontally. Okay. Everything is perfectly aligned. These gold sticker sheets that I've linked for you all, they are 10 sheets for $16. So they're a little bit pricey. Um, you may be able to find them elsewhere. Just look for inkjet, like gold inkjet printable sheets, and that may help you. So before we flatten it, I know that we're going to have a gold sticker, but we don't want to print this yellow on our gold paper. So I'm going to make it white because it doesn't actually print white ink. It just won't print anything. So I'm going to change it to white and then we're going to select everything and flatten it. And so all that you'll really see is this black on the gold printable sheets. Okay, so we've got our elements ready to go. Now I have not resized any of this. So we're going to need to measure everything before we actually go to cut it out. So let's look at our hat and we're going to measure this area for our patch first. So this is going to be about no wider than three inches. So let's go into design space. I'm going to select everything for my patch. And we're going to make sure, I'm going to put it at right at three inches. You could even go like 2.85. Um, and that's going to be perfect. And then I'm also going to make sure that my dad and my one are attached. I'm going to select them both in the layers panel. I'm going to attach them. And then I'm also going to attach the red dad and number one so that they cut directly together. Okay. And then for this guy, we need to measure the bill of our hat or wherever you plan on putting your sticker. And so I'm wanting to put it kind of on the edge here. So like, I don't want to make a two inch sticker. It's going to take up that whole area. So I'm thinking like one and a quarter or one and a half. Let's do one and a quarter. So back in design space, you can see it's two inches right now. I want that to be 1.25. Okay, and then we're going to go to make it. You can see I've got my one sticker there. Now, if you intend to make lots of these hats, I would encourage you to print your stickers all at once. If you know who they're going to be for, you can change data to grandpa or cousin or whoever's name you want it to be for, whatever you want it to say, but the sheets are $16 for 10 sheets, I believe, which is a little bit pricey in my opinion. Um, so I would hate for you all to waste a ton of that gold paper. But if you have other sticker ideas for the gold paper, you could do that too. Um, like I said before, this is just totally optional. I just feel like it adds that extra touch. And then you can see down here, we've got our offset for our patch for our hat. That's going to be cut out of cardstock. And then we have our words. This is all going to be cut out of vinyl. So let's go back up to the top. We'll start with our print and cut. I'm going to select continue and we're going to need to send this to the printer. So these sheets are eight and a half by 11 sheets. Make sure you have the correct printer selected. We do not need a bleed. We are going to use system dialog. Get in the habit of using the system dialog when you're printing. That way you get the best prints and I'm going to show you all why. So turn on your system dialog, select print. If you're using a Mac, the dialog box may not pop up for you. So what you're going to need to do is just drag this down. Windows, it'll typically pop up in the front. And then I'm going to make sure my printer is selected correctly. Make sure my paper size is correct. And then under media and quality, you're going to have this feed from drop down menu, select rear tray, auto select for media type typically, and then I'm going to do best quality. So this is going to give me the best quality print every single time. And then I can go ahead and print that. Okay. So these are the gold sheets that I ordered. You can see I pre-made some of these already. 
Um, so for bigger hats, you can use these bigger stickers. And then obviously we've got these smaller stickers here for these smaller brimmed hats. But this paper is very high quality. Just make sure that you're purchasing the gold foil for inkjet. I did purchase these off of onlinelabels.com. I've bought stuff from them before and it always is really good quality. I've linked them below for you all if you're curious. So I'm just gonna line this up to the top left corner. And like I was saying earlier, if you can try to put multiple stickers on one sheet, I will also say that ink is wet. So a brayer is probably best for rolling. I would not take a squeegee over this and try to flatten it out. Um, and you can even let it dry for a minute before you touch it. And then we can go ahead and send this through the Cricut. So back in Design Space, I'm gonna browse all materials. I'm gonna type in foil. There is an adhesive foil cut setting here. Now you could use sticker paper, but you're gonna have to use a lot more pressure. I had to run it through a couple times when I did that. So I'm gonna do this adhesive foil and see how that one works. I just think that it's gonna work a little bit better because this is a gold foil sticker paper. So before I pull it up, I wanna make sure that it cut all the way through. I'm gonna actually let that run one more time and I can tell that my machine needs to be calibrated. That's totally fine. You guys are gonna be able to get the concept, but I would recommend calibrating your machine before you do these stickers. Um, I did have to calibrate the other machine. I actually made the original ones on a maker and I did calibrate it first um, and they look much better. So you can just pull this off. Make sure you're not, when you're testing to see if it's cut, push to the outside, not to the inside, so you don't actually scratch your sticker like I'm doing now. You need to be very, very careful. So it cut through the second time, but not great. It could honestly, a third pass probably would do it perfectly. I'm gonna actually use one of the ones I cut before. Um, I did cut these originally on sticker paper, like removable sticker paper with more pressure, and I did extra passes, two or three extra passes. So this paper is a lot thicker. You're just gonna have to remember that when you're cutting it. So calibrate it, sticker paper cut setting with more pressure is gonna be your best bet. So these are the ones that I made with the machine already being calibrated, and you can see they come off really well. We can just add this here. Okay, and now we can cut out our patch. So you're only gonna need a couple things for the patch. I've got a mini easy press. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this on to the medium heat setting. And then I have some black glitter cardstock. This is shed proof glitter cardstock that I was telling you all that we're so in love with from Ashley Falco. You can find it on her Celebration Warehouse website. I've linked it below for you all. I've got some red HTV, which is heat transfer vinyl. And then I have some white heat transfer vinyl. So we are going to go back into design space. And I'm going to find our little black patch. We're going to start here. Okay. And I'm just going to browse on materials. And we're going to do this on glitter cardstock. Get done. And then I'm just going to put my piece of cardstock on my mat. And then we're going to run this through the Cricut. So before I remove it from the mat, I'm gonna make sure it cut all the way through. And it did, so we can remove it from the Cricut. I always like to go with gravity. There's our little patch. Now I'm going to cut our vinyl. We're gonna start with the red here. And you could technically use a standard grip mat for this. This light grip mat is actually pretty sturdy. So I'm gonna use it. It's relatively new. And y'all, this is a Timu Cricut mat. And I have been using it religiously for like the last two and a half weeks. Um, 10 out of 10 recommend the Timu mats. They're way cheaper and they work just as good. I've also put my HTV shiny side down or carrier sheet side down. And I'm going to need to mirror this in design space. 
So make sure you select mirror before you cut. You can even bump these closer to one another if you want. We could technically just take this world right here and place it where we want. But honestly, I probably should have attached it in design space to make it easier. So I'm going to cut them separately. That way I can place this one exactly where it needs to go on that cardstock. So I'm going to hit done. And then we're going to do the everyday iron on cut setting and keep it at default pressure. Something that I do want to point out whenever you're making this patch for your hat is that adhesive vinyl is not going to stick to glitter cardstock. So if you have red and white adhesive vinyl and you're wanting to put it on black glitter cardstock, you are going to have the worst time. So I recommend if you do want to use adhesive vinyl that you use just a plain black cardstock versus a glitter. And if you're wanting to use glitter, you're going to need to use heat transfer vinyl on there. That way it can actually activate the adhesive and it'll stick to the glitter. The normal sticky adhesive, it's not going to stick to glitter and it's going to give you such a headache. So just a little tip there. So before I take this off, I'm just going to make sure that it's cut all the way through and it looks like it has so we can remove it from the Cricut. Okay, so white is going to go carrier sheet side down, and we're going to cut this one exactly the same as the red one using the everyday iron on cut setting and make sure it is mirrored in design space. So while that's cutting, I'm going to go ahead and weed out the rest of this. I'm going to make sure that this cut all the way through, and it did, and we can remove it from the Cricut. So I've got all of my elements here. I am going to cut this world off so we can apply it separately. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to actually put the worlds on first. Okay, you can see right here, you're just going to line it up with the offset. And I'm just going to take my easy press and just barely, barely apply heat. This adheres very quickly. Okay, and then slowly peel it off. So I want this to just go right there in the offset. Go ahead and apply some heat. This adheres really well, so you do not need a ton of heat. Just be careful when you pull it up. Okay. And then I'm going to take the white portion and just kind of set it off just barely to the side. And then we're going to remove that. And you've got your little patch. And then we can just put a little hot glue on the back of this. And I'm going to attach this to the front of our hat. Just make sure you're looking at the back and that you're selecting the right area to put it in. If you're, especially if you're wanting it on the front and center, I'm just going to put a little dot of glue there and then we're going to apply it just like so. And there you have it. You can put in any candy or filler or whatever you would like and you are good to go. What did you all think about this craft today? I love it so much. And honestly, the second time I'm making it, it felt a little bit easier. So if you make one and you're like, ugh, that was so stressful, I want you all to consider making another one or making two or three more. It gets easier the more you do it. And I just think that goes for all 3D paper crafts, honestly. 
um, but I really love how this turned out and it's, it's so cute and easy to customize. If you all make one of these, make sure to leave us a comment and let us know. If you're a member, post a picture in our members only Facebook group. We would love to see it. I would love to see the color choices and all of the things that you all do to customize these hats. And if you are new here, make sure to click the subscribe button below and the little bell so you're notified every time that we post new crafty videos. If you all like this video, make sure to watch this one up here. I think you're going to love it just as much. So um, we're going to be making shaker style letters and like, I don't know what it is. Maybe it's just me. I love shaker anything in paper crafting, like shaker Christmas ornaments, shaker literally anything. I'm obsessed with it because it's got uh, yeah. glitter. And if you're all like, what is a shaker? Let me just show you. So this, if we can go overhead, let me just shake. I'm going to knock some of these loose. So you can see I've cut out like little hearts and there's like confetti in there. And like, how fun is this y'all? Especially for like a little birthday party or I'm making little Valentine's ones for like my daughter is Ruby and then we've got Ivy and Scarlet at her daycare. So I'm gonna make them cute little Valentine's um, 3D shaker letters. So there's lots of tutorials out there for shaker style like cake toppers. I feel like that's probably the most popular type. Um, but what we're gonna do today is basically manipulate one of our 3D letter files and turn it into one of these shakers. So y'all know if you've been here for any amount of time, I love to manipulate our SVG files. I don't know why, it just empowers me as a crafter. I love taking files and tearing them apart and making things that I want from my brain onto the Cricut Design Space. So let's go, um, let's go ahead and go over everything you're gonna need. Um, so I've got a few things here. Where should we even start? Obviously you guys are gonna need um, card stock. So let's move all this stuff off of here. So I've got multiple different types or colors of card stock. Um, and I'm also gonna be using some scrapbook paper today. So I've got this white, I've got um, I'm not using any copy paper. So most of this stuff is pretty thick. I'm going to say you want to stick around like 60 to 80 per 80 percent, 60 to 80 pound cardstock. And I've got some little scraps here we're going to use. So I've got red, white, and then this is the pink Ashley Falco. And listen, if you don't know who Ashley Falco is, I'm going to recommend that you guys go follow her on Instagram. I don't, does she have a YouTube channel? Am I crazy? I don't know. She might have a YouTube. I know she's like heavy on Instagram. She has a website called Celebration Warehouse. Um, if you go to her Instagram, you can follow the links through there. And actually, I think I linked her paper below for this project. Um, this paper is so good and she makes a shed proof glitter cardstock. Uh, the shed proof glitter cardstock It's amazing. Is... Um, and then I've got a piece of acetate or mylar. I'm gonna be honest with y'all. I don't really know the difference between acetate and mylar. I use the name interchangeably. These are acetate sheets. So they're like a clear, just a flimsy clear piece. This is gonna hold all of our glitter in. So cardstock, acetate sheet, standard grip mat. You can use a new light grip mat as well for these car these paper projects. I've got some foam tape or foam squares will work perfectly. We're gonna be cutting this up anyways. Um, I have some Crafters Precision Fine Line Glue, a hot glue gun. This is a precision hot glue gun. If you have a non-precision hot glue gun, like, like a standard one, I would recommend investing in a precision hot glue gun if you're wanting to do paper crafts. It's just helpful in preventing like the glue from seeping out. And then I've got an ATG gun. I'll explain more about what this is. I've got some chunky glitter. Now for these projects, you do not want to use fine glitter. You're gonna want to use any type of chunky glitter or even like confetti would work really cute. You can kind of get creative with what goes in there as long as it's not super thick, um, but you want it to be chunky. The fine glitter will static to the acetate sheet. So that's why I don't recommend doing fine glitters for these. You can, but I just feel like it sticks to it. It's so staticky. Y'all know what I'm talking about, how glitter sticks to stuff sometimes. Yes. And then I've got an X-Acto knife, pair of scissors. These are some tweezers. I have a scoring adaptive tool with a scoring wheel on it. 
a bone folder. If you are new to paper crafting, you're probably like, what in the world? A folder, first of all, bone folder. What a name. What, what a name. A name. Um, this is I wonder for... if it's because, I wonder, because it looks like... Bone? It looks like ivory or bone. Like, but, I wonder if at one point that's why they were called a bone folder. Yeah, like it originated from that? Yeah. I don't know, y'all. If y'all know the history behind the bone folder, let us know. Yeah. Anyways, that's what it's called. You can or maybe it's just because it's bone colored. <laughs> maybe, but like they can make these in literally any color. I don't know. I don't right? know. I don't know. Anyways, they're very handy for making your creases crispy. And y'all know I like crispy edges. So crispy. So crispy. So crispy. And then I've got some, just like a random scrapbook paper here that um, I just grabbed before I came in here. Um, we can use whatever you want. So like on the inside of these, I like to put a patterned scrapbook paper just to add a little pizzazz. Um, so grab some of that and y'all, that's it. Other than your maker, um, I'm gonna be doing a print and then cut add on to this, but you can make these shakers without doing this print and cut feature. There we go, we have three answers. Okay. So let's hop in to the website and like start getting into the good stuff. So I'm on the Makers Gonna Learn website, makersgonnalearn.com if you're new here. And I am under the 3D file section. So these are all of our 3D letters. And y'all, we have letters and numbers. So if you're ever looking to do any of these, we've got every letter and number that you need. Um, but you know, let's do, I'm gonna do an S today. So I'm just gonna go ahead and download this. It's gonna pull into a zip folder and we're gonna double click that zip folder. And then it's gonna pull in as an SVG. So I'm just gonna click, drag, and we gotta update Cricut. I went ahead and uploaded my image into Design Space. Now, if I were to cut this right now, it would just be the S. There would no B, there would no B, there would not be a <laughs> shaker portion of the letter. So what we're gonna need to do is break our file apart. So you can see whenever you pull in these 3D images, they come in as one unit. So before I do anything, I wanna pick the size of my image. I'm thinking that I want to do like a six to seven inch letter. This is my tip for you, hack if you will. I'm gonna pull in a square shape the size of what I want my letter to be. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna make this seven inches right here. What I'm gonna do now, while everything is still grouped together, you do not wanna resize sections of your 3D files without resizing all of them. You cannot do that because everything will be off. So while it's all together, I'm gonna go ahead and resize my image to the size that I want it to be. Let's see, that is perfect. And here, I'll bring it to the front so y'all can really see. So you can see my S is almost entirely fitting inside of this seven inch square. Beautiful, right? So now I can just get rid of my little square and everything will be from here on out should remain the same exact size. We are gonna be cutting up this file, but we're not gonna be resizing anything unless we resize it all together. So what I did, and I had to write a list y'all because <clears throat> there's a lot of layers. So I wrote a list um, and honestly, let's go overhead. I'll just show you guys my list. If you wanna make one of these and you wanna screenshot this, I feel like this could be helpful for somebody. Yes. So, so let's take a pause, screenshot that list that Alicia has made because mm -hmm. Alicia is a list girl and sometimes I'm not so much a list girly like Alicia <laughs> is, but seeing someone else's list really helps me. Yes. So this is great for you all to take a screenshot of that list mm -hmm. um, and then make sure that you go step by step. Yes, and I'm gonna explain what I mean by all of this. So basically what we're gonna need, what we have already is right here is our bottom layer, right here is our top layer, and then these are our 3D pieces. This is what makes the letter 3D. So this kind of sandwiches in between the bottom and the top layer. What we don't have is our acetate layer, our border that goes on top, and then the printed paper layer. So we need to create that for ourselves. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna ungroup everything. So now you can see the S's are by themselves and then all of this is a unit. Okay, 
what I'm going to do next is I'm going to take a shape, just a basic shape, just a square, and I'm going to unlock it up here to make it skinny. Okay, I'm just going to hover over that and I'm going to click and drag and select the square as well as the letters and we're just going to hit slice. This is going to duplicate our letter. So now we've got top layer, bottom layer, and look, let's just check them off as we go, just so y'all can know. So I've got my bottom layer, my top layer, and my 3D pieces, and then even right here, I've got my printed paper layer, but I still need my acetate layer, border layer, and my inset border layer. So let's go ahead and duplicate this three times because we're missing three layers. One, two, three. So all together, we've got six layers. Is it bothering y'all that this is all backwards? Just flip them all horizontally. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to flip them because it's bothering me, and I feel like it's hard for y'all to understand. Yeah. Okay. There we go. Perfect. <laughs> I love it. There we go. Now, we need, we need to keep this back one backwards, if that makes sense. Yes. Uh, so we're going to keep that one that direction. Okay. So what I like to do is make sure I've got all of my layers so we did, we made an acetate layer, a border layer, and an inset border layer. Now, the printed paper layer is going to remain solid. The acetate layer is going to remain solid. But my border layer and my inset border layer, we're going to need to create. Now, what I'm saying when I say border and inset border, let's go overhead. So you all can see the eye has this pink border around it. That's our border layer. This white right here is our inset border layer. So we need to create those. So what I'm going to do is come onto one of my S's and let's create the border layer first. All I'm going to do is come up here to my offset on the top middle and we are going to do a, an inset. So whenever you come to the left side of this line, it's going to inset and it may be hard for you all to see. Let me change the color of my S. So you all can really see what's going on here. So I'm going to select it. We're going to go to offset and then I'm going to slide this to the left side and you all can see right here, the blue lines are on the inside. I'm going to make this a 0.25 offset. Oops, 0.25, negative 0.25 offset and then hit apply. Now we don't stop there. So Right now we have this inset and then we've got this outer gray. I'm going to select both of them and I'm going to slice. And now we're going to be left with this gray and we can delete all of the insides. So you can see right here, this is going to be our main border. Is everybody with me? I think so. Okay. Now we're going to do the same thing again for the inset border except we're gonna do it twice this time. So we need like an inset inset, you know what I'm saying? Yes. I'm gonna change the color so y'all can see what the heck I'm doing. We're gonna go, we've got our letter selected. I'm gonna make an inset. This time I'm gonna do like a 0.15 inset. And listen, the numbers really aren't super, like it's not a super huge deal. I just, the, uh, 0.15 and 0.25 are like my go-to numbers, if that makes so sense. So did you make the inset on the first one 0.25? Yes. Okay. What? So wouldn't you have to make the inset, the first inset on if we're doing a double like inset, mm -hmm. you'd have to make it the same size as what you did on the first one? Um, not well, so hold on, let me finish showing what I'm okay. doing and then we'll, if I do it wrong, we'll troubleshoot it. Okay. So you do this first inset. Now, while that inset is selected, I'm going to go back up here again and do it another time. And then I'm going to hit apply. Now, I need to just get rid of this back layer. This one can just go. What I want to do is slice out my two insets and then get rid of all of this middle. So then this should fit nicely right on top of here. Now, if you wanted them to be like the exact same width, you would do the same exact thing. Right. Does that make okay. sense? Yeah. So, um, and then that's, that's it, y'all. So let's make sure that we, before we cut anything, I want to make sure that we've got all of our layers. This was the hardest part for me whenever I started doing these. And I was like, 
I'm forgetting layers on accident because I didn't have a list to follow. So let's, I'm going to say layers like a thousand times. I'm sorry. So we've got bottom layer, top layer, 3D pieces, printed paper layer, acetate layer, border layer, inset border layer. Yay, we did it. Yes. We made it. Okay, so we're not ready to cut yet. We've got a couple more steps. Now, whenever you pull these 3D letters in, um, the three-dimensional portions right here, you're gonna have a bunch of lines as well as the image. We need to change all of these lines to the score function. So right now, they're at basic cut. All you're gonna do is come up to this operation menu and you're gonna drop it down and we're gonna select score. So this is very, very important for those that are new to paper crafting. Mm -hmm. You must, there are some files that will pull in and they'll already be score lines, but a lot of them, if there is a solid line, if it's just a solid line, mm -hmm. that's gonna be a cut. So if you don't go and change those lines to score lines, what you're gonna end up with is all of these shapes and they're gonna be cut away from each other and you really just needed them scored so that you could right. bend them. Right. So you definitely cannot miss the step of changing those solid basic cut lines into score or dashed lines on Cricut Design Space. Yes, so we changed them to score. Now, they're still not attached, okay? We need those score lines to be attached to our cut lines. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna keep them where they're at, excuse me, and then I'm gonna click and drag, and we're gonna attach everything. That way it's gonna score exactly where it needs to score. Okay, so we've got everything that we need. Now the next thing I like to do before I actually cut everything is color code. So I'm gonna change everything. I'm gonna have a pink letter today. So all this green stuff, I'm gonna change it to pink. So let's just, it doesn't want to let me because I've got those layers attached, but that's okay. I'm going to change all of these to pink so I know exactly what's going to be cut out of my pink layer, etc. I'm going to detach these because it doesn't want to let me change my colors. And then I'm going to change that to pink and then click and drag and reattach them. I think everyone must be like super focused right now because there's really not anybody commenting. Oh, okay, okay. That's okay. Okay, and then um, I've got, let's see, we have our printed paper layer. I'm just gonna make that red. And then we have our acetate layer. I'm gonna make that just like a light gray. And then our thick border needs to be pink. I want it to be the same color as the rest of our thing. And then our thin border, we're gonna do, let's do a white border for that. Okay. So everything is here. We are good to go. I'm feeling good. I'm feeling ready. Yes. Okay. So the next thing we need to do is go to make it. Now, y'all are probably looking at mine, like looking at this one right here. There's some extra elements on that. Um, y'all want me to go ahead and show you how to do the extra elements? Should we just do it all at once? Yep. Okay. Let's just do it. Okay. So before we make it, I'm going to show you all how to add the name. So... I'm just gonna make a new text box. Let's zoom in, cause we're like way far away. And I'm going to type out Scarlet. And I'm gonna use the font Affection. Y'all, this is one of my new favorite fonts from the Makers Gonna Learn website. It is so I know. cute. It's got little hearts. And look, I did it in all caps. Y'all know I hate that. Yeah. <laughs> well, redo it because that don't look cute. Yeah, I gotta fix it. Scarlet. Okay, and then the only thing that we need to do is make sure our letters are adjusted. So if you find that your letters ever overlap on a font, you can just separate or ungroup to letters. And what it will do is separate all of these letters out and you can just kind of adjust them so that they're not kind of laying on top of each other too much. Um, I mean, I feel like that's cute. Yeah. That looks I good. Like that. Okay, and then I'm gonna move that to you or it's gonna bother me. Okay, and then I'm just going to click and select them all, and then I'm going to unite them, which is basically like the old weld function if you're still learning, um, you know, all of the new little doodads. Yes. And I'm going to change this to red, this deep red. I think it's so pretty. 
And then what we need to do is resize it so that it fits on our S the way that we want it to. So this is our front piece. And I want to make sure and size this depending on where I want to put it. So I'm probably going to put it right here through the middle. And this is a pretty long name. I feel like that's cute. And this is something that it's going to depend on what name you do like, uh -huh. root and what letter you're working with. Like S is going to be a harder letter to work with. Yeah. Another good thing would, or another good placement for that would be on the top um, left hand corner, kind of like catty cornered. Like oh, if you, that's cute. If you like adjust it, and, yeah, turn it just a little bit would mm. be really cute with the hearts going down the side. I love it. I yeah. love it. I'm obsessed with that. Okay. So perf that's the perfect size that I want. I'm going to add an offset. And this time I don't want it to be negative. So make sure you take that off. Let's do a 0 0.15, whoop, 0.15 offset. And I'm going to select apply. I do not want it to be black. I want it to be white. So while the offset's selected, I can change my color to white. And then I'm going to- You gonna might want to zoom in for this one real quick, just yeah. because it's kind of far away from over here. You right, you right. Okay. okay, can y'all see better? Yes. Okay, so right now I've got both layers. I want to select them both and we're gonna flatten this image because this is gonna be a print and cut. And if you're like, oh, I can't see it. You can change the color of your canvas right here. Just select that and we can change it to this light gray. I'm gonna lose one of my S's, but it's okay. So now you can see this is where it's gonna cut, just where the white is. I do want to add another layer offset. This is, when I do paper crafts, I like to have lots of layers. It's just a style. Um, so I'm going to add another 0.15 offset to be cut out of cardstock. Let's make it 0.1. And I'm going to apply that. And I want that offset layer to be pink. So I'm going to change it to pink. That way it cuts out with my other pink stuff. Okay. And then, so we've got all of this ready to go. Now I'm going to add a few little hearts. So I'm going to pull in a heart, just a basic shape. And y'all, we have the basic shapes on the Makers Going to Learn website now too. I'm just pulled that in really fast. Um, but we have all the basic shapes from Cricut, which is amazing. So I'm just going to add, let's just do two little hearts. I'm going to add two in. And you can like tilt them however you want. I kind of like them like floating. And we'll probably just put them here and then Scarlett's name up here or something like that. What do you think? I like that. Cuteness? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to hold the shift key down so that both of them are selected. While they're both selected, I'm going to offset it. So they're both hearts are selected. This is going to create an offset for both of my images at the same time. And it'll be like a conjoined offset. So I'm going to select offset. We're just going to keep it at point one. And then I'm going to hit apply. And I think I want to do my offset in white. So we'll actually, we'll do it in pink. And then I'm just going to change my hearts to red. These are going to be cut out of the red cardstock. And y'all, that's it. That's it for our images. So now what we need to do is go make it. So we're going to go over here to make it. Y'all can see how this can be like a very time consuming craft, but also very therapeutic. Yes. Paper crafting is very therapeutic for me most of the time. Um, we did, we are doing a make -a project right now that it's trying to kill me. Our little shadow box, circular uh -huh. shadow box, but it's going to be good. Okay, okay. So immediately this is wrong. It can anyone tell me why this is wrong? Me, me, me. Lauren, <laughs> because tell us. you had the print and cut and then added an offset to the print and cut. So mm -hmm. your offset it's stayed trying. a print and cut instead mm -hmm. of back to a basic shade. Yes. So let's just go back. We're going to cancel. And all I'm going to need to do is change my offset to a cut function because we're just going to cut the offset straight out of cardstock. Yes. So change the operation back to basic and it's going to change it to gray and then you're just going to have to adjust the color from there. So we're good to go. Let's go ahead and make it. And then you can see here also what it's the new font. It's the new printing I know, cut. but I hadn't updated my computer yet. So I have not done it, it yet either. <laughs> um, the new print and cut looks crazy, but that's what it looks like. So that image we need to actually print on the cardstock and I've got cardstock out there. Um, so let's go ahead and select continue. Hannah asked us, um, what pound cardstock would you use for this? I think you said at the beginning, anywhere between a 60 to an 80 pound would be really good yes. for this. I would, 
honestly suggest for the letter, probably 60 would be easier than 80. Yeah, and you know, you're gonna hear it different from everybody. I'm just gonna say this, you don't wanna do like 100 pound or anything really uh -uh. over 80 because it's not gonna bend the way that you want it to. Um, it's wanting us to calibrate our machine. So here we go, we gotta do it. Okay, so I'm gonna print that and it's I gonna go to my thing. I'm gonna select continue. Let me go grab it, I'll be right back. I would have personally said no, but it's yep. um, It's not wanting to print. Uh, SOS, SOS. SOS, send help. Oh, it's communicating, printing the data. Okay. Shoo. I guess, yeah, the update probably does make you calibrate because it's completely different. It's like brand new. It's brand new. We've probably not done a print and cut since it updated. Well, if you're new here and you've never calibrated your machine, welcome to the calibration welcome to show. Cricket calibration. Okay, Cricket calibration 101. <laughs> I, I printed, so it prints this weird looking sheet, and what you're gonna do is just line it up as well and good as you can on here, and then I'm gonna bray it down. And just follow the instructions in Design Space. Um, all things Jessida just became a new yearly member. Oh. Welcome and congratulations. Hello, welcome. Okay, I'm gonna move all this stuff out and then we're just gonna load it into our Cricut and I've got my fine point blade in and I'm just following the instructions. That's what's great about Cricut. It tells you exactly what you're supposed to do. It's measuring my mat, and then it's gonna read this little registration box on here, and it's gonna make a bunch of little cuts. We'll get there, we'll get there. I won't get too far ahead. Let's go to the design, design space. Without unloading, examine the cut line around the small square in the middle of the calibration sheet. Does the cut line touch the printed line all the way around, yes or no? Um, no, no Becky, it doesn't. Okay, <laughs> no. Not We're gonna select, no, let's do a basic calibration. We're gonna select continue. The reason calibration is so important with print and cut is because if you go to do a print and cut and your machine isn't calibrated, it's gonna cut like off. It's gonna off cut center. like a quarter inch to the side and yeah. it may cut through your design and it's just not cute. We need to calibrate our machines. I know we were trying to avoid it, but that's because this tutorial is so long and we don't wanna keep y'all here for three hours. Yeah, my computer is doing the same thing. It's, it's dying. Oh, it's dying? Mm-hmm. Our, our computer batteries are jacked. It makes me want to take it and throw it out <laughs> Do you want to go get a new... No, I'm partner? okay right now. It's, it's not giving me the warning yet. Okay. So, design space. Without unloading, examine the lines on the top and right side of the calibration sheet. Use the drop-down menus to select the number or letter of printed lines where the cut is centered with the printed line. Excuse me. Y'all are not going to be able to see what I can see. Um, but let's do 7i. Y'all, this machine is not calibrated. It looks so bad. 7i does? No, like the holes, it's like way off. Like all of it's just so off. I've never seen it so off. Anyways, 7i is on the best. Yes. So continue, and then it says it's complete. No, the basic is complete, and then from there you can do an intricate calibration. Dear Lordy. Can we X out of it or do we have to do that? It doesn't. It's work. not prompting me. Oh, you've got to keep doing it. Okay, so we're going to another one. Print. Okay, let me let me go, go get grab this. another one. Let me go get it. Ashley said that she too recently just joined and she's excited. Welcome, Ashley. So Hi. glad to have you with us. Hi, how are you? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, does anyone have any questions while Alicia is grabbing the calibration sheet? Um, Y'all, normally, like if you're new here, it doesn't, like we would already be like doing our craft by now, I'm so sorry. But you know, this is real. This is why we like to do lives because this is real life, like what would happen if you were making this at home. I guarantee some of y'all are gonna go make this and you're gonna have to calibrate your machine because design space just updated. Okay, we printed it. I'm gonna select continue. I put it on the map. It's gonna connect and it's gonna tell me what to do. I'm gonna load it in and it's going to. You do rewatch it. It's just a more condensed version of us talking to you, chit chatting and what we're doing today. And then you can just like watch the tutorial only. Yeah. Um, Carol says where you purchase your computer from makes a difference. They use smaller batteries and machines sold by places like Costco. Interesting. 
Okay, oh. my cut looks good, everybody. It's good. Continue. It's good. It's good. We did have a friend um, says, good afternoon. My name is Latte. I'm new here. Where can I find the design? So that is a great question, Latte. Um, the design that we have is actually a Makers Gonna Learn exclusive file. So if you're new here, then you probably don't know what we are. We are a crafting die cutting community um, where we have a membership where you can sign up. So, okay, I am, I have printed my image. It looks like this. I'm following in design space now and it wants me to set my base material. So I'm gonna go browse on materials and we're gonna do medium cardstock. We're about to get into this tutorial, y'all. So make sure you are zoned back in. We are starting back up. So yes. I've got medium cardstock here. I'm gonna select done. Default pressure, fine point blade. Let's go ahead and load this into our Cricut. Yes. Um, somebody did ask us, so my question, is the Cricut made strictly for Apple? No. You can use Design Space on Windows, on a... Um, on like a Windows computer, HP computer, use it in the Windows software or with Apple, with mm -hmm. Mac. We all here just have Mac computers. We do have an HP computer that has Windows on it. It works fine. Um, we just all have, pers we personally have Macs. So that's just what we, computers we have. Yeah, it's total personal preference. And I've been a PC user for years. Oh, except, yes. Except, except when I did I went to school for graphic design and I did it there. I used the Mac. And then when I worked at an art studio doing their graphic design, I used the Mac. Um, so I had that. never used a Mac until I started here. Yeah. I had always been a Windows girl. That, for some PC reason, that girl. surprises me. I feel like you were like a Mac. No, I have forever and always been a Windows girl. Well, and hey, well, and it's hard to like learn one or the other. It was very hard for me to learn. It's a weird adjustment. But yes, and Nikisha said phone and tablets work as well. Absolutely. You can get Cricut Design Space. You don't have to have a computer. You can do this on, um, you can definitely do this. Okay, so this tablet. cut, I'm just going to remove that part. And when I'm doing paper projects, I like to flip my mat over and remove it this way. That way that it does not bend my paper. Because if I tried to just pull that off of the mat, it would be curly. So there's our name. Now back in Design Space you can see we've got our first layer. It's wanting us to cut our white layer. So I've got a sheet of white cardstock here. I'm just going to line this up on my mat. Okay, and then I'm using a brayer to roll this paper on. You can use a burnishing tool like this, but I really like a brayer for my paper project so it really sticks down. Okay, and I'm gonna load this into the Cricut. Okay, I'm just pulling this off very delicately because this is the border piece. Okay, here's our border piece, our, our inset border. And we can throw away this little guy. We don't need him. And listen, if you do paper projects, just make a little pile because you're gonna have lots of pieces. I'm gonna make a pile over here out of the way. 
And then in design space, it's prompting me to, to cut my light gray layer, which is my acetate. So I'm going to get my acetate sheet and you can see where I cut my eye out. I'm going to put this just like that because it's going to cut out in this top left area. We're just going to bray this on really good. And then Erica says, that's hilarious. And I would have thought that was Lauren's idea. <laughs> I know, that's why I was, like, when I saw it, I was like, Lauren's going to be down. I was like, it's I not know. That it, it's not that I wasn't down, but, like, I just don't have the dance moves that I used to. I used to, listen, I used to could bust a move. Age has me not being able to bust a move anymore. Uh, having a baby makes me not bust a move. Okay, so, um, for some reason, on this Explorer machine, it doesn't want me... It doesn't have the acetate cut setting, so we're going to cut it on Mylar, yellow. Mylar and acetate are interchangeable for me and my brain. Maybe I'm totally More pressure wrong. pressure always just in case. Yeah, you can cut on. It's going to do two passes, so let's just not do okay. more pressure and, like, see what happens. So it's going to measure my mat, and then it's going to cut it. And I feel like it's probably going to do two passes. I know with the acetate on the maker that it does two passes, so... Hold on, let's see. And if y'all are curious what I'm doing, I'm not unloading my mat, so it's wanting me to unload it, but I'm not because I know that it's not cut all the way through. It almost has though. So what I like to do is just hit that play button again and it's just gonna cut it again, but do not unload your mat because it may not cut exactly where it was the first time. Oh my gosh, okay, it cut through, it cut through. Five passes later. Five passes. Okay, I'm just What is that, SpongeBob? 10 million years later. Seven hours later. <laughs> okay, here's my S. It's so much S. Okay, we got our red layer in design space. So this is actually the layer that I wanted to cut the um, printed. The printed out of, but I don't want my little hearts to be printed either. Yeah. Can I do this from you here? You can move them to a different mat. I can't do it from here, but I can go back. I'm just going to mm -hmm. hit cancel and it's going to take me to this page and yeah. I'm just going to hide these. Hide. And then we're going to cut this S out of patterned scrapbook paper. I ran out of my cute little heartsy paper and I, can, I swear I was like, I know there's another sheet somewhere, but I cannot find it. Um, I'm going to have to run and get, do you want me to go see if I can look for something? Because I'm going to have to go get my, because it literally just told me that it's going to go to sleep. Oh no! Actually not just, it told me about three minutes ago, but I've ignored it. Okay, look how pretty. Is this pretty? No, that does not match. No. Ooh. Now that. It's not Valentine's though. Okay. And there's not another of that heart? I didn't, I couldn't find one. I let, used it all up. Let me look. I was thinking it was in this book. That's why I grabbed this book, because I was, like, crossing my fingers, you know. There's a... Oh, oh, I found some. I found some. Okay, awesome. Thank you, sweet baby Jesus. Okay, this is just standard scrapbook paper, um, but for this type of paper project, this is perfect for what I'm needing, because it's kind of just serving as a background. Now, if you have a directional pattern, make sure that you don't have, like, I, I want to make sure I'm not putting it on here this way. Like, I want to put it on the correct direction of the pattern. So, I'm going to bray this on, and then we are going to cut it. I'm going to send it in. And then my base material, I'm just still going to use medium cardstock. Just, it cuts all the way through on my scrapbook paper, and that's what I like to use. And then once that loads, we will cut it. Um, Lindsay, I said the paper is gorgeous. Is it listed? Um, I'm pretty sure this paper was bought like a eight, thousand years, ten ago. years ago by Courtney. <laughs> okay, let's make sure it's cut before we remove it. It Jean is. says, if this is truly what you do at work, I'm going to need a job application. I wish this was all we did at work. That was our mental break. <laughs> that was their mental been, mental break. Me and Lauren have Content been Content like, creation is our mental break. I feel like <laughs> me and Lauren have been like D -d 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 for like days yes. now. Okay, now it's wanting me to cut my pink. So I'm gonna get out our Ashley Falco paper. If y'all missed it earlier, we are using Ashley Falco's cardstock. She makes shed proof glitter cardstock that is amazing to die for. I'm obsessed with it. Um, but this is just her like standard blush cardstock and it cuts the difference 
amazed me. I was like very unsure. And Cheryl, we're fixing to get into actually putting the letters together. <clears throat> yes, I'm so, so sorry. Is the scoring stylus in here? Yes, it is. Thank you, Jesus. Sweet. Okay, so I'm going to put my scoring stylus in my machine. Make sure it's in there. Give it a little wiggle. Now I've got that song. Boom, boom, shake, shake. 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 Now I think I did a cheerleading routine of that, I feel. <laughs> okay, so this is the part where we're going to be doing some scoring. So I have my scoring stylus in clamp A and my thumb point in clamp B. And then I'm just going to load that in. I showed you all the scoring adaptive tool earlier because I forgot that we were using an Explorer. But if you are using an, are you having to hold your computer? It's so up? hot. Oh my gosh. It's so hot. If you're using a um, maker, you can use the adaptive tool. But if you have an Explorer, you'll have to use the stylus. Okay. Browse all materials. We're just going to go with medium cardstock again. Done. I don't know why it's making me select it every single time. Normally, it just does it automatically. And then you guys are going to get to see the stylus work, and then it'll automatically flip to the fine point blade, which I really like. Which is, Very if handy. you have a maker, honestly, I would prefer using the scoring stylus over, although you have the capabilities to use the adaptive tool on the maker, I personally prefer using the scoring stylus because you don't have to interchange that. Like, you don't have to take the fine point blade out, yeah. put the scoring wheel in, take the scoring wheel out, put the fine point blade in. I will say I do think that the scoring wheel gets a little bit of a deeper score on it, but I still would prefer the scoring stylus because I don't have to change it out. Yeah. Unless your housing pops it out and you have to use it. <laughs> <laughs> that would never happen to us. That would never happen. Yeah. Okay, it finished scoring and now it's gonna start its cutting. So you wanna make sure that your mat is sticky enough to like handle all of the stuff that's going on, especially with this type of cut. Um, and also, I used non Ashley Falco cardstock to do this for one of these and I had to recut it. And this cardstock cut so much better than the cardstock I used before. I don't know what brand it was. We also love Recollections. So yes. Ashley Falco and Recollections are really good, but Ashley Falco, I don't know, I don't think Recollections is like small business. Ashley Falco is, and we like to support small business. I love the original maker. Like I just, I think it's great, except the only thing is that the housing for the scoring stylus or the pins, like the score, it'll pop mine out there that I use every day. It will pop it out. So I do have to use the scoring wheel, but you know. Um, mine don't even have one. <laughs> I don't know how to do it, but I do love the maker a lot. Okay, here's all of our little caterpillars. I always call these caterpillars because that's what they look like. Um, and then what else do we need to cut? I think we've got another layer of pink. Yes, we've got to cut all of our pink S's out. So let's put this on here. So We're Move almost. That one S. That one S is very close to the other S. I Listen, they're just trying to save us some paper. Okay. Is that the, is that the new update? <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> we'll see what happens. When is the podcast starting, Kathy? It should have started two weeks ago. But Thanks, uh, it's funny you asked. It's funny you asked that. <laughs> um, it's any time now. Any time. We've got most of the stuff in there. It's just we. What happened was Amazon sent us some wrong um, camera. I ordered uh, some cameras because it's gonna be like an audio visual podcast. So you're gonna get the. And I didn't even show you guys my scoring technique. Maybe we'll save it for another paper project my little scoring. So I saw this hack and I wanted to show you all cause I tried it before the live where they would, so on my hearts right here, what they did was duplicate the hearts that went inside of it. And then they turned two of them into score lines and then attached them to the offset. And so what it did was create an outline of the heart. So you know exactly where to place your hearts whenever they get cut out. Isn't that genius? Maybe that's confusing. I'll nope. make a TikTok. Genius. <laughs> I'll make a TikTok for you guys. Okay. So now I've got all of my S pieces. I'm going to move these over a little bit. And we're just going to pull all of this off very carefully. All right. The time has come, my little friend. We've got to attach everything. What song is that from? The what? time has come, my little friend. Oh, it's off Alice in Wonderland. Oh. <laughs> the little oysters. Oh, yes. Okay, so 
And y'all can come up with whatever works for your brain to organize this stuff. I'm just going to kind of walk you through what I do. And I've seen other people do these. I've even seen Tanner make one. Um, but I'm just going to do it the way that it has worked best for me. Because this one I tried to use like sh almost strictly HEG. This is a hard no for me. It was falling apart. And so I'm going to use the HEG gun for a lot of this. But I'm also going to be using my hot glue. And then I've got my precision tip glue right on hand in case I need it. Is that glue gun on? Yes. Okay, just making sure. It's yeah, I turned it on before the live. Okay. Okay, so we're just going to start from the back and work our way up. So I've got my back layer right here. And then we're going to need our little 3D pieces because remember, these are going to be sandwiched in between the bottom and top S. So whenever this cuts out right here, can y'all see this square in this circle? Can y'all see that? This is what helps me to line up my pieces. So like this circle right here, I know that this circle right here needs to be on this top edge. And like I know that this square needs to go right here on this bottom edge. And then there's a triangle that we're going to line up right there. So that's how you're going to know what goes where. So you can really keep it in the cutout if that helps you. Um, I'm just going to kind of keep it to the side. And you can also refer back to design space if you need to. Um, but I know my circle goes to the top, so let's go ahead and start there. So I don't know if you all are able to see my score lines, but what I'm going to do is take my bone folder and I'm going to start folding all of these creases. So I'm going to fold right at the crease. I'm going to take my bone folder and just wipe right across. And this is going to give all my edges a nice, clean, crisp edge. Oops. Make sure it's lined up before you go, on, go in there with the bone folder. And this is the part that looks kind of therapeutic to me. Because you're just going in and folding all of these. Do y'all have questions so far about like lining it up or anything like that? Anybody? I think everybody's just zoned in. We have 199 with us now. Nice. Nice. And listen, sometimes um, I fold these like the wrong direction. If you do that, that's okay. You just it's, fold it. It's just, just okay. It's just fine. You just fold it the other direction and go on with your day. As Asher used to say when he was little, it's Gus okay. Oh, <laughs> that's he would, so cute. He said that up until like the last year. He would say, it's Gus okay, Mom. Oh, my gosh. That's... I'm like, yeah, you're right. It is Gus okay. <laughs> it is Gus okay. <laughs> so cute. <laughs> so I'm just folding in my tabs and then going over it with the bone folder. I also want to recommend for you all to use color core paper. So in the paper world, there are two different types of paper. There's color core and non-color core. The non-color core paper it's is also called white. white core. Or white core, yes. yes. Um, it's white on the inside. That's why it's called that. So like whenever we make these cuts, you're going to have white edges. It's like there's, they've colored the paper after it's been made. I feel like color core, it's like dyed all the way through. The way that I think of it is I think of it as like white paper sandwiched between two other pieces of black. <laughs> colored. Col kind of like um, the hardwood plywood stuff like you have your filler yeah. inside and then you have your hardwood sandwich on both sides of it so it's like you're l using a little bit less so yes. it's not so fancy right, right. so i'm just going to keep working my way around here now this part is probably one of the more time consuming parts but is also like this is more so like the therapeutic part because mm -hmm. it's kind of like a mindless task. I don't know about you guys, but when I am super stressed out, like I want to do something that is very mindless. Like a monotonous almost. Yes. Okay, so I've got my little things. And then <clears throat> we can go ahead and go in and attach the first piece. So you can go in with an ATG gun and just go around these edges. So this ATG gun, you're just going to hold the trigger in and then apply pressure. And I'm going to try to stay as close to the edge as I possibly can. Just like so. I'm just going to do a little bit at a time. And then like we said earlier, our circle is up here at the top. Okay, there's our circle. So I know that my circle tab needs to line up with that top edge. So I'm just going to flip this around so I can really see what I'm doing. 
and I'm going to line that edge up. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is just take my bone folder and kind of push that down on the inside. And then we're just going to keep lining this up all the way around. Okay. And then sometimes people like to apply the ATG like all the way. You can do that if you feel like there's be more room. So, and the ATG gun takes a minute to get a hang of. I'll just say that. Yeah, Belinda says tear tape works great for this type of stuff as well. What type? She said tear. T is it tear? T e a r tear. I, that's tear tear tape. Tear tape. It can be either way. It's like <laughs> reading red, right? Okay. Which always never made sense to me. Why would you have read and read? That's read? why English is one of the hardest languages to learn because it's so confusing. It don't make no sense. I'm fixing to read this or I have read this and they're the exact same word. <laughs> anyway. 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 So I'm just going to keep, I'm going to go ahead and do this all the way around. I feel like it'll be easier if we just go ahead and get it ATG'd. That way we can just attach as we go. Okay, so it's ATG'd all the way around. And I'm just going to keep on plugging away. And you can take your ATG gun to like press down those little tabs in there as you go. Bone folder. What did I say? You said ATG gun to press down Bone the folder. Tabs. Bone folder. That's, yeah. <laughs> that's what I meant. That's, that's what, what I, mean. I meant. And then you just kind of shape it as you go. This is so, like, the first time I ever did this, I was like, this is so fun. Like, I'm just building a little letter. I'm just building it up. And then I like to make sure I can see my edges, especially around the outside. Y'all want to get this as lined up as you possibly can. And sometimes it's not going to be perfect, and that's okay. Okay. And then let's move on to our next piece. So we've got our little square one. This one's gonna line up right here, our square. So I'm just gonna fold all of these. Do you want me to start folding one while you um, yeah. work Let on Let me give you a burnishing one? tool. Okay. Does it matter which way it folds? No, if it's wrong, I'll fix it. Okay. It's so easy just to like reverse it if you fold it the wrong way. I did that a lot, especially when I first started. I was like, what in the world am I doing? And if you're intimidated by doing something like this, my advice to you is just to start. Like, just get it cut out. First step, get it cut out, and then just start. And the first one may not work. And that's fine. Well, just keep making them until you carnation. figure it out. What? I just said that. What? I just said it. I just, I just said it because I felt like it. Oh. <laughs> what in the hee-haw tarnation? <laughs> okay. Because I just feel like it. Just felt like it. Do y'all like having our lives at 1.30 or 12? Me and Lauren voted 12, or 1.30, I'm sorry. Sadie, what do you think? You like 1.30s too. We can eat lunch if we do them at 1.30, so. We and we can, really like lunch. We really love lunch. We love eating <laughs> here. Okay, there's that piece. So I'm gonna line my square piece up with this bottom one, just like so. Okay, and press it down. Let me make sure I'm not going the wrong direction. Nope, I'm not. Okay, do y'all have any questions so far? Oh, Sadie's making a poll for us. Look what I've done, y'all. I went backwards on accident. So the ATG is not permanent, so I'm gonna pop this off. And I'm just gonna flip it this way. I think that's where my problem is. Yep, there we go. Some of y'all probably caught that when I was trying to make sure I was doing it the right way. So reline that up, and then we're just gonna line this outer edge up. Okay. And then this one will go in here. Lauren gets quiet when she's working on stuff. Can you tell? Yeah, I do. Sorry. It's so funny because, like, if Warren is hosting a live, she can talk and craft. But if we're in the studio and she's crafting, it's silence. Which I'm silent, too, when I craft, too. I have to focus. We got to be focusing, you know? Yep. 
Okay, and I'm just gonna put all these tabs so they're kind of like sticking up more. And then Lauren's gonna hand me that other piece. How's it going over there? Got it mm -hmm. <laughs> Yay! I hope it's the right way. We'll, we're fitting to find out. Fitting okay. to find out. So the triangle was this piece right here. So I need to line up my triangle to here. I think you did it. I did it. You did it, girl. So I'm gonna line this up. Okay. Am I, I hope my big old head ain't blocking y'all. No, I think you're good. Okay. And then you even have these little tabbies like where they connect. I'm gonna just put a dot of hot glue there. I could have probably put ATG on this like beforehand, but I didn't. So I'm just gonna use my precision glue and just attach those right there. Okay. Jeanette asked if we are on the East Coast. Yes, we are on the East Coast and we are in East Tennessee. Mm-hmm. East Tennessee represent. Represent. <laughs> <laughs> okay. This part, it, once it starts, like once you start really doing it, like and you're almost to the finish line, it kind of gets cramped. So sorry if my head's blocking. And I'm just trying to push down these little tabs as I go. Okay, here we are, people. I'm gonna add a little bit of hot glue. Uh oh, I'm attached. I'm gonna add some hot glue right here. I love these precision hot glue guns for this type of project because it just makes it feel so much, so sturdy. The ATG gun is good though because it doesn't dry that fast. So I use them interchangeably when I feel like I need to. Kathy says in between would be better because I'm usually in the car now picking up my son from school. Well, Kathy, let me just tell you, we usually don't run this long either, but it's okay. What did she say? What did she you said that she's normally in her in uh, the car picking up her son from school, and I said, well, normally if we even if we do a one thirty time, we're normally done around two thirty. Yes, we're this just running a little over today, which is not a big deal. I knew it was going to take a long time. Yeah, just had a feeling. Okay, so there is this is like our base. Now what we need to do is attach our S to the top. I'm gonna hot, use hot glue for this because if I try to go in with my ATG gun, it's just not gonna work. So what I like to do is kind of start on the top here and just add a little bit. I don't want it like oozing out everywhere. I'm just gonna start just like that. And 130 is the winner. Okay, good. We probably swayed a lot of people because we said we like to eat lunch too. <laughs> <laughs> Did we talk you into it, you guys? You can tell us. So I'm just adding a thin layer of hot glue all the way around. I'm going to do it fast. Remember, with hot glue, you've got to work quickly or it's going to dry on you. I feel like this is upside down. Maybe not. We're committed now. We're already committed, everybody. What do you mean? Like, I feel like it should have went this way because it's looking a little bit too small here and it's looking a little too big here. But it's okay. Yeah. We're committed. Okay, so this It'll is the letter. It'll all come out in the wash because you're um, adding layers on yeah. top of it. Yeah. So, okay, here we go. We've got this piece on here. And then what we're going to need to do is add our layers. So the first thing I'm going to do is add my little S, my little and printer sure that S. it's the right side. Yeah. Well, I'm committed to the wrong side now because that one is wrong. Other, this will be upside down. What do you mean? The hearts will be upside down? Yeah. Well, no, I could switch it this way. I'm just going to do it this way. It looks better. Okay. Okay. It'll look better. Okay. And then I'm just going to use, I could totally just ATG on the back of this, but I'm just going to, just like that. Okay. And then just place it accordingly. Okay. And now what we need to do is add our foam strips. Okay, so I have these, and I think that y'all can, I think that you can buy like strips of foam like this that aren't this fat, um, but I'm just gonna be cutting and then putting them all the way around the edge. So what I like to do is kind of measure my edge. So, like so, and you have to put these all the way around because if you don't, the glitter will fall out. So we've got to put them all the way around. 
and I'm just going to put this right here. I'm going to keep the tops on all of them to start. And then after we get the glitter in there, I'll peel off this like top non-sticky layer. Lauren, you want to come over? Sure. Do you want me to start um, cutting some of that for you? Yeah. Okay. Just cutting me some little strippy strips. I can do that. Here, I pulled this one off already. Okay. You need something to measure? I was just going to go at it. Just do it. I just need, so I'm trying to cut them pretty skinny because I don't want them to show on the outside. And I don't want them to show thicker, like they don't need to be thicker than your border. If they're thicker than your border, they're not going to show up. And then I'm just kind of trimming as I go. And if y'all have a better way to do this, let me, <laughs> let me know. I'm just going to cut as I go. This needs these things on it too as well? The, uh, no, I was just giving you that if you needed, to, if you wanted to measure. Okay. Yeah, you can just leave it there. And then I'm going to trim as I go. Here we go, peeps. Making our way. Some letters are... Making my way downtown. Walking, walking fast. Faces fast <laughs> and I'm homebound. Do -do 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 -do. <laughs> <laughs> Lindsay, we made this live long just for you. Just for you, friend. Just especially for you. Okay. And oh, I don't think they've seen my Valentine's nails yet. No, Lauren's got Valentine's nails. These are not my Valentine's nails. Valentine's nails. Let's see them. Let's show them. Aren't they cute? <laughs> I need to get some, but I don't know what. We're going to Nash Vegas for Valentine's. Me and Trey are. Oh, yeah. I got to bring you my boots. Lauren's bringing me some cowgirl boots to wear to Nashville. Thank you. I just figured it'd be easier to trim as you go with those. Or yes. No? no, that's perfectly fine. Beautiful. And once you do this, like, you kind of get in a rhythm. No. Glenda says you cannot leave any gaps in this layer of foam tape or your glitter will leak out. That is why um, you have to. That's why you have to do That's this. why you got to go all the way around. you gotta, you got to go hard on this. Thank you. Oh, my gosh. This is making it so much faster. So get you a foam tape cutter, girlfriend. <laughs> To help you cut. <laughs> okay, and then I'm just trimming as I go. I feel like I can use this one here. Oh, I do have my pink ones in the car. Your pink boots? Yeah. They came in? Yeah. Cute. This is too thick. Okay. That one thinner? That's perfect. Okay. Nope. Um, Carol says, I hope there's only two other kids in Ruby's daycare room. Actually, this is the last one. She's already made Ruby one, and she made the other little girl one, and this, so this is the last one. There are only three. Yes. They have, like, one little guy that comes every so often, but it's mainly just Ruby and two other little girls, which is, like, literally a godsend. If y'all have children in daycare, you know how hard it is to find daycare. Our daycare got shut down because... It was like my childhood babysitter, and I guess she wasn't like technically licensed to be a babysitter, which I didn't know you had a license. I guess if you have so many, you do. You do. Anyways, they got shut down. So we were like desperate because I had just started working here, um, and I worked from home before here. So like we wouldn't even plan on having a babysitter. And our oh, babysitter. Is that one too thick? No. Okay. Our babysitter just fell into our lap and literally is like Ruby's second mother. She's an angel. She's so good. I love her to death. Okay, I think that's about it, Lauren. Is that it? Yeah. Whoo! We tag team that really good. We got it. Okay, so all of my pieces are on here. Now what I'm going to do is add glitter. Glitter, glitter. And now you can cut like these little heart confettis. All I did was just put a bunch of hearts um, cut a bunch of hearts out of different pink, red, and white cardstock. But we are just going to do glitter for now. And all I have to do is just come in here and just kind of sprinkle a little bit around. And you, I, like I was saying earlier, you're going to want to use chunky glitter. So if you use fine glitter, it's going to try to attach to that acetate or the mylar. And we just don't want that. I'm going to put these cute little stars in here. I love it. Y'all could probably find some cute like Valentine's glitter too. 
And so now that it's all in there, what I'm going to do next is weed out, weed off all of these sticky pieces. The reason I put my glitter in there first is because I don't want the glitter sticking to my sticky foam. So y'all can see. And just be really careful because obviously your glitter is in there. And the best way to get this top film off of the weeding, I'm sorry, of the foam is to use a weeding tool. Okay, any questions about the foam portion? We're in the home stretch, everybody. We are. It's like 100 degrees in here. Are y'all hot or is it just me? No, it's just you. I mean, it's not, it's warm in here. I definitely, if I had anything but the t-shirt on, I would be like roasting. We would be roasting for sure. Mm -hmm. Try not to get your hands stuck to the sticky part. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so if y'all want a more consolidated version of this tutorial, it should be out next Friday. Or, yeah, next Friday. And we just do that because we really want you all to be able to watch the tutorial without all of like the mishaps and things like that. See how my glitter got stuck up there? You've got to be super careful. Don't be like me. Okay, here we go, peeps. Do we still have 200 people here? 178. Okay, okay. Yeah. I promise the finished product is worth it. These are just so cute. Ooh. Glenda says, I like to glue a tiny bit of glitter here and there throughout the project so that when someone picks it up, you still have a little bit shiny throughout. That's a really good idea, too. Yeah, it too. is. And you know what? Um, Do you need help? No. Okay. I'm just, almost done. Just asking. Um, I, so originally when I wanted to make one of these, they have some that are like deep in 3D, like they're hollowed out on the inside, if that makes sense. Uh-huh. And I realized that if I did that, like my glitter won't really show, like yeah. it just kind of falls to the bottom. Like if you do it shallow like this, it kind of all stays up to the top. And I really like that because you can see the glitter more. Um, but those are, I mean, the deep 3D ones are still really cute. My, uh, I'm almost weeded all the way around. Somebody said that they made 3D letters. Sorry, I feel like I'm zoned out. Somebody said that they made 3D letters and put like for a grad last year and they put like money in it. Now that would be a great one to do like a fully hollow one. That's a cute idea. I love that idea. Okay, we're almost there guys. Hang tight. I, honestly, y'all are the real MVPs. The real ones. People the that realest. are still here right now, like, I need to get a list of your names. Y'all are the realest. <laughs> this is probably the longest live we've ever done. Besides, like, summits and... What is the largest you can make these 3D letters? Um, as large as a 12 by 12 piece of paper. Yeah, and, but, so, the little oh, caterpillar but pieces. You, the caterpillar pieces. Yeah, you'll have to use a 24-inch mat if you want to do them much bigger. They do have 12 by 24-inch cardstock. It's specialty mm -hmm. cardstock, but you can do 12 by 24-inch. Yeah, you would have to probably do it in, like, a basic, they don't have, like, a good color selection for 24-inch cardstock, which is sad because I feel like we use, I mean, I feel like we use quite a bit of 24-inch cardstock. We do. We just don't have a lot. Like, we don't have a lot of color options. I don't know that there are a lot of color options. There's not. There's really not. Okay, that was the last of it. I got a little bit of glitter on my sticky part, but that's okay. So, the next layer that we're going to want to put on is our mylar. Yeah. Okay. So, I'm just going to line this up like so. These foam things are so Sticky. Sticky, sticky. Sticky, sticky. And then the next layer is our pink. So you can kind of line it up. And you'll be able to tell if it's like super off if it's not lining up correctly. Like that looks way worse. And we can go in and trim. Like you might have some stuff hanging off. You can go in and trim with an X-Acto knife, which I'm probably going to do off of the live. 
Um, but I like to hot glue this part down. So just be super careful whenever you're using hot glue on these because it'll like smudge out and get all over your acetate sheet and I really don't want to like smudge it or make it look gross. If it comes out the side, you can kind of wipe it with your finger. Oh, everybody's saying that. Um, I guess Lindsay kind of started it. She said, I love the real life lives, all the girls chit or all the chit chat because the stay at home mamas need it. Um, yeah, and that's what we're here for. Absolutely. And then Kim said, I love the real life issues you guys run into. It makes me feel connected because we all have issues. If you only knew we got the issues. amount of issues. We got issues. We do got issues. <laughs> I'll we be got like, real issues. I'll be like, I'm late to the meeting. I gotta go therapy. Yeah. And that's on, period. But I guess you meant like the real life, because all, all crafting the issues. issues. That, crafting issues. Those issues, we got all the issues. We got the head issues. We got the crafting <laughs> issues. We just are really Craft good. Craft issues and emotional baggage. And emotional baggage. We are really good at bringing it for you guys. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, so. And then Claudia said, we love you guys because you keep it real. We try. Aww. We try. Thanks. Y'all, I swear, my I put on my acetate sheet so crooked. But I'm going to trim it up with an X-Acto knife off, off screen because I really don't. You know, the perk of adding these little, like, elements like the name and stuff is you can cover up mistakes. Mm -hmm. Just there's a little hack for you. You can, day. like, if you have mistakes, add more layers. Layers <laughs> will cover the all more, your the sins. better. <laughs> the more, the better. That is a fact. Okay, and then I'm just going to use my fine line precision glue here. And I'm going to hold it with my reverse tweezers if I can get a good hold. And we're just going to squeeze a little bit of this out. Oh, hold on. I just used this before the live, but it gets clogged. Carol says we have to make a TikTok about all of our issues. Hold <laughs> that on. would be a long, that would be a series of TikToks. A series, yeah, we'd have to start a, a TikTok series. TikTok series. That's hilarious. Issues. <laughs> like y'all want craft issues or what? Because I, I just want to say, and I think a lot of our regulars know this, but like we do, we're the same as y'all in terms of like, we're making mistakes all day long Yeah. when we're making stuff. I don't ever make something correctly all the way through the first time. Like, no. Like, I've never done that. So, I don't want y'all to feel like we do that, but, so you should. Because, really, that's not real life. Yeah. I'm using two pairs of tweezers. And Michelle had a really good, she said, this is why we all became crafters, because it is therapy. Absolutely. Oh, for sure. Absolutely. Okay. My mother is avoiding actual therapy and just painting right now. <laughs> <laughs> painting everything. That's so funny. She better not be watching. She'll call you out. I know. Okay, so there's my border. And then I'm just going to add, I'm going to add a couple of these foam squares. Actually, I can just add this little strip. A foam square onto my offset. Did I put my offset on backwards? Nope. And then I'm just gonna line this up so it's a little bit 3D. And then you can add your name wherever you want. And then my hearts, for some reason, I, I hid my hearts and we never cut them out, but I'll add those later. So you can add like rolled flowers to these, are really cute. Uh, whatever you want to add on, feel, get creative. You know what I mean? And so that's it. So cute. That's it, guys. So I need to trim up some pieces, obviously. Um, but you can just see, like, all these look so cute. And they're just a little bit different, each one of them. But that's it. Who was it? We're done. Uh, Tina said that. We have... One of my favorite projects to do with the Cricut today. Mm -hmm. It's paper. It's 3D. It's a moment. It's you a guys, moment. You guys are going to love it. If you have never done a 3D paper project, this is going to definitely rock your socks off. Um, yes. We're unboxing a Cricut because sometimes it can be overwhelming. Mm -hmm. I know some of you at home are sitting there and like, ooh, I have a Cricut in the box. 
Well, what I want you to do is pause the video, go find your cricket, enjoy your go love today segment. It's going to yeah. be awesome. Here's what we're going to do. We are going to unbox this machine today. We're going to talk all about paper because it's one of my favorite things. And we're going to make this, is this the pillow box? Yes. I love the pillow box, y'all. Me too. The pillow box is so good. We did a so, Mother's so Day gift with it and did like yeah. a cut out of the front of it. So yeah. lots so, of options. Jeff says, in your opinion, is there a reason to upgrade to a Maker 3 if you don't use smart material? So Jeff, for me personally, the biggest value I find in the Maker 3 is how quiet it is. This is a very quiet machine, um, and that's my personal favorite reason. Um, other than that, no, we don't use smart material. They're more expensive, they're harder to use, and they're confusing. <laughs> so we like to use <laughs> the old-fashioned way with a Cricut mat, and it's so, so good. So how many of us are scared to open our Cricut? I want to talk to all of you that are scared to take this out of the box because I want to show you it is not hard or overwhelming at all. So yay, I love it. I'm so, so excited. So let's open it up. So let's just go take a look at the box. Now y'all, I like to refer to Cricut as like an Apple product. It is a luxury. And it's it very is, nice. It's very, it, there's not a lot in here. Yeah. They stopped with, when it comes to the Airs and the Explorers threes, they stopped giving you um, Cricut mats. So when you first open the, this is an Explorer three, everyone. When you open it up, you get smart material. You get a sheet of smart iron on, you get um, some transfer tape, and I think you get a sheet of regular vinyl too. Let's just open this up. So this is like enough to make a project, I think. So you get their transfer tape. I'm a fan of Cricut transfer tape. Alicia prefers Caesar transfer tape, mm -hmm. um, but it's just not really for me as much as it's the other. It's total personal preference. Yeah, I love this transfer tape. Number two, you're getting a sheet of Cricut smart vinyl this is just so thick i do not enjoy um it as much and it's more expensive this is their smart card stock i think yeah smart paper sticker card stock I, listen let's not even talk about why someone needs this like i'm confused. and they're calling it smart because it's matless so whenever you get a cricket yeah. you cut on a mat typically um yeah. but the smart products they don't use yes. a mat and really y'all it really doesn't matter. Exactly. We're cutting in a 12 by 12 square like 90% right. of the time. Right, right, so. right. And if anyone's curious about Inner Circle, check the join page. You'll see the additional coaching calls, the training curriculum, the bonus courses that you get in addition to the workbooks and the planner on that sign up page. So last but not least, you get the smart iron on. And again, you would cut this without any type of mat. So that's super fun. We're gonna sit this to the side right here. And then now you see the Cricut. This is your cord. So this is like a printer cable to your computer. You'll plug this into the Cricut, you'll plug this into your computer and hardwire the connectivity right here. So this is super fun. Next up, you'll see this is kind of like the boring, like let's get started. They give you another sheet of smart vinyl, which is a little They odd. must have a surplus. They must have extra. <laughs> I've never seen Cricut over deliver, but wow. <laughs> Thank you, Cricut. So <laughs> next up, we're going to just take it out of the box. Like you can see, you have the cord. I love the new cords. Um, they're very easy to use. So we'll just set this to the side. And then last but not least, we're going to get the Cricut out of the box. Ta-da! Dun, 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 oh. dun, dun. Dun, 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 dun. Tanner, I told you I did this with one of my best friends at my house like oh, a month ago. Isn't it so fun? She made like 50 onesies for her sister's no baby way. shower. It was like really, it was probably like 25, but. My property managers, how do I say this? My property manager, Hunter, shout out to him. He's amazing. He literally keeps my life together. Um, his fiance's sister got a cricket. And they asked me on Christmas if I was gonna be at the office. Aww. I was like, no. They can come by. I, I told them, I said, come. I told, I, told, I invited them to my house. I said, yeah. I got everything at my house. We'll just craft there. Yeah, um, that's So fun. we're gonna have to have them over this week. So anyway, we're gonna take this out of the box um, and we're gonna remove this. Now let's talk about the Explore versus a Maker. So this Explore, I believe is like 13 pounds. I'm trying to find the weight. Um, I don't notice a significant weight difference just by lifting and handling them They're like a little, in the studio. Th there's a difference for sure. Is this um, one lighter? Yes, it's a lot lighter. I want to say this is 13 to 15 pounds, while the Cricut Maker um, is definitely 
in the roughly like 100 pounds, or excuse me, oh, the, the 20, <laughs> they're in the 20 pounds. So <laughs> that is super, super fun. The small um, pieces for testing is what everyone yes, says. Yes, yes. But they give you the large pieces too. So it's just like a little confusing, right? Like, yeah. how about it? So you can open this up. You just want to remove this little inner piece and then just take off this tape. So we're just going to rip this. So you'll notice the Cricut Maker is more expensive. And you'll notice that the Cricut Maker um, is definitely, you know, something that you will see a lot of. Um, like there's more tools, there's more things to do with it. We pretty much can do everything that we like to do with an Explore as well as a Maker. Yeah. So there's not too much difference for us personally. Um, but now what you would do is you would go to the setup. So what I want to show you is over here, Cricut's made it really easy to say, you know, need help. You can visit cricut.com slash contact, but there's usually a let's get started and it says activate your machine. If you are brand new to Cricut, you will need to activate your machine, which means create a Cricut Design Space account. Now, what will happen is that you will see and we can actually do this together just so that you all are well aware. I won't make an account, but I will be able to share with you. Let's go to cricket.com slash setup. And what you're going to see here is it's going to encourage you to go through the whole entire process of being like, hey, do you have a cutting machine? I do. Do you have an explore family, a maker family, a joy family? We have that explore family. And we're going to agree to the terms and it's going to encourage you to download design space okay so i've already downloaded it so we can click open app and we'll click open cricut design space Ta -da! i love cricut because it's so streamlined and yes. clean cut there's not a lot of extra buttons there's not a lot of extra like fluff and it's mm -hmm. very easy to follow step by step when you're installing and using design space and things like that exactly it can be easy. I know it seems daunting, and I hear people saying, oh, I'm intimidated by Design Space, right, but once right, we get right, in right. there, it's super easy. Based on the um, other machines on the market, I would say this is your best bet. So I already have an account. It would encourage you to sign up and create an account if you hadn't already. Um, so what I want to do now is just give you a briefing of what the software is. Now, a big question and a big training differentiator that we get is a lot of people constantly ask me, Tanner, what, like, do I have to pay for Cricut Design Space? And the answer is no. You do not have to pay for Cricut Design Space. Cricut Design Space is free. So the software you're looking at right now is included because you have purchased a Cricut. Um, this is included and you're able to enjoy it and take full, full advantage of the machine you are not able to use your Cricut without Cricut Design Space. Um, this is you just, it has to be, you have to use it, okay? What is different is Cricut Access. Cricut Access allows you to save a little shopping at Cricut. It gives you access to a lot of different um, cut files, but it doesn't give training. So I wanna share with you why I think Makers Can Learn is a better investment if you're comparing Makers Gonna Learn to Cricut Access. So let's go to projects and you can see there's all these projects and let's take the chipboard Christmas tree, which I personally think is amazing. Okay, like I would love to make this, but as a Cricut beginner, you may not be able to make this because here's the tutorial they give. This is actually more in depth than a lot of them. There's actual photos, which is handy but a lot of them don't give much support at all. So just be careful when you're joining Access. I know you may have a lot of different files here, but you're not getting a lot of access um, for like support. So that's what we do different is we give a ton of support, like making a graduation cap. Like, like know, if we came out with a file like that, we would probably yeah, have a tutorial We'd have a video, up. we'd have a lot more. Right. Some of this can just get it confusing and whatnot. So you just want to be careful um, if you're not able to get support, um, you know, what's the point of having all the files? So in our membership, anything you download, you get to keep forever. 
aggregate access. Once you cancel, you lose access to everything, unfortunately. And those are just some things to keep in mind, okay? So we are so, so excited. Um, if you're a Makers Gonna Learn member, I wanna show you our platform. So we are really all about ease, ease. So this is our cut fall area, and you are gonna be able to like look at, today we're doing paper in 3D. So we can go up here to 3D. And this is after you have an account. Membership is so good. So be sure to join. If you're new, I'm just gonna sign in real quick. So what we'll do is go over to Cut Files and you're going to see that you have 3D. So let's go to 3D now that I'm signed in. And under 3D, there's so many 3D projects. So the frog, the elf on the shelf projects, it is so much fun and I love it. So once you download one of our files and upload it to the amazing Design Space, it's gonna be saved to your account on Design Space. And I'll share with you that here in a moment. But I'll share, search for boxes. So, so let's just search box and we'll see how many different boxes there are. So you have the tile ornament box, the skyline in a box, the lantern box, um, the ornament box, the, uh, the bat treat box, you have a lot of shadow boxes. We love doing Those shadow boxes. Those are so boxes. pretty. They're so fun. Yeah. Um, we have different ones, so they're super fun. The snowflake box, the tree box, and let's see. Oh, we're in Christmas. We don't want to be in Christmas. We want to be in 3D. Let's go over here. Search again. I like, this is where I really like to do the view all sometimes. Oh my gosh, I can just scroll yes. Through. yes. Yes, 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 yes. Love it. So for some reason, it keeps putting me in Christmas. I just want to be in 3D. So let's, I love the view all button as well. Mm -hmm. uh, I found that Makers Can Learn on top of Create Access provides me the best cut files and instructions. Access alone is not enough, even if you are only a hobby crafter and not planning on selling. Makers Can Learn is great. Thank you so much. Um, so you can see we have a lot of different boxes and whatnot. Here's the ones I wanted to share with you. So we have the mailbox, we have the card box, we have the 3D box with folding lid, one of my favorites a gable box, a heart box, the pillow box, which is what we're gonna use today. Mm -hmm. So this is our, and our fry box. I love the fry it's box. Cute. It's, it's so very fun. cute. I think that would be a cute Valentine's and I might make those for Ruby that say Ooh. like fries before guys or something. Yes, for I her little that. girls at daycare. Girls daycare. That's so, so cute. So we'll download this file right here and it's gonna give you a zip file. So let's go over here to design space and we are going to go to upload. You'll go to upload image and we're going to now come over here and go to downloads and you'll see you have the paper box, the 3D pillow box. Double click that. So you'll take the SVG, now that you unzipped it, you're going to take it and drop it right here. This is gonna allow you to have the full SVG separated with colors, with lines, etc. So we're gonna click upload and we're gonna select it and add it to the canvas. Coffee Powered Home says, been obsessed with tags and shakers recently. Yeah. I have been trying to make a 3D shaker letter. I have been you mad sciencing it. it. You're gonna I, love it. I want to make one so bad. Mm. I want to make You're one. I need it I to be amazing. To teach us. I know, it's I can't awesome. wait either. <laughs> <laughs> so what we're gonna do is now that we have the file here, one thing I want you to do and make sure um, is to make sure so Miss P, sounds like we need to email customer care. Thank you, Sadie. She's dropping that for you. Um, when you upload a file, let's go to upload and click view all. Once you upload one of our files to Zonspace, you have it here. So this is super, super cool. Um, so you can just search for it and you could search like box um, and see all of our box files that we have from the site that we put here. So that's super cool. Um, so you don't have to upload it again. So yay. Now that we have this here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna select the lines. So the Cricut software doesn't know that this needs to score rather than cut. So what you're going to do is you're going to make sure to select this, these lines and we're gonna change it from an operation of cut to an operation of score. And then we'll come down here and do that to our second area. And we're going to click operation score. And now we will press ungroup. So we're gonna ungroup this. And now we want to attach our score lines to our cut lines. 
So we're going to click attach and then we're going to attach the bottom score lines to the cut lines by clicking attach. So here's what we got. All of this is ready to go. Should we change the size? Will this make the exact same size? It should make the exact same size. This is a perfect size. So it's yeah. about six um, by three once it's built. For this, it's six by seven almost. And what you, you'll see here is we use three different pieces. So we are actually going to cut this out on some amazing cardstock today. We've linked it down below and we're super excited. So here is what I want you to understand. You already have got your machine out of the box. You downloaded Design Space, followed that. Um, you've got the software and it is super fun. So how do we repeat, ungroup, and detach? So let me share with you. When you upload an SVG like ours, it's going to come in like this. So look, it's all together, meaning it's grouped together. So if I click on it, I can't I can't move anything around, mm -hmm. which is frustrating. So first, you always will want to ungroup. I like to size it first before ungrouping. Yes, I would, yes like, that's a good point. If you need to make it bigger, make it bigger first, okay? Right. So once it's this size, you will now click ungroup, and you're going to first select the score lines and go from basic operation in the top left-hand corner, you're going to go to score. And then we need to do it to these score lines here. So find them in the layers panel, click on this right here, and you're going to click from operation, you're going to click score. Ta-da! Amazing. Love it. And then the last thing you need to do is keep the score lines where they are on the canvas so we need to attach them. So we are going to go ahead and select this right here and we're going to click attach. And then we're going to come down here, select these two layers, and click Attach, which attaches down here at the bottom right-hand corner. So super fun. Click Attach. Now what happens is I can't move my score lines away from my cut lines. And a lot of you, if you get confused, will be like, oh my gosh, like, how does Cricut not automatically know that it needs to be there? Well, my friends, what I want you to understand is that we have to tell the cricket what we want. So you have to just be, you know, thorough. And a lot of us say, how do we know what needs to be scored? So what you'll notice is that these score lines are typical lines. There's not many files that have just random cut lines on them. Right. So if you see lines, chances are there's to be made score. Yes. So yay, I'm super excited, super awesome. I'm gonna delete this out because we already have what we need. And then what you're going to see here today is we are using a really fun craft card stock for our light gray color. We're using the craft card stock for our dark gray. And we're using glitter for our little wrap right here. So that is going to be super, super fun. Should I, we don't have the sticker we're using today, but I want to share with you that the file that we're using is available for Makers Gonna Learn. And the name, do you know the name of the it's file? It's Floral MGL logo, I want to say. Oh my gosh, let me share with you this. If you want to make some Makers Learn swag today, um, go to Cut Files. And if y'all didn't see my sweatshirt yesterday, Ooh, I used this file for the sweatshirt. I love it. And it is so pretty. I love it. It's like my favorite it's thing. It's awesome. I think I always type in like Floral logo to find yeah. it. Yeah, 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 yeah. And for it brings sure. it up. I... I, you cut me out one, so we're good. Okay. I'll so we have out. stickers. These stickers we also have... We're mailing you one, um, but we did some print cuts with it too, so it's super fun. So we're just gonna search for floral MGL and see if, oh, here it is. So you can download this, turn this into a shirt, turn this into a sticker. Yeah. Great way to make your own uh, Makers Gonna Learn merch, which we would love, love, love for you to do. So we will add that as a little piece at the end, but we're focused on building your very first box. This is so fun. Uh, so this is going to be awesome. So look what happens. We are going to click make it and you're going to see you have your glitter, you have your base layer, and then you have your second layer. Now I'm cutting my base layer out of the same craft cardstock I'm cutting this layer out of. So today I want to make sure you all know one of our favorite secrets. 
I want to teach you how to move a layer that is a different color to a different map. Meaning, instead of loading it twice, you are going to be able to move this to that second map and only have to cut this on two, two mats, a glitter mat and a craft card stock mat. So let's click on this layer. Let's click the three dots at the top left-hand corner and we're going to click move object. Y'all ready for this? Click move object. And now we're going to click move object, select a new mat or material color. So we're going to click that second mat and press confirm. Ta-da! Magic! I'm moving it over. And now we only have two mats that we need to worry about, which is incredible. Love that. The machine's letting us know. We're going to score and do a basic cut, which is awesome. We're going to click continue. And Sadie, let's see if we can go overhead real quick, because I just want to share with you all that the blade is already um, put in. And then all you need to do is plug in the USB and plug in your power source. Two very, very simple simple, simple things to be able to do. So really awesome. So now what we're going to do is we're just going to grab the cord or cords here and we're going to plug the Cricut into the USB. Do, 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 do. I've already plugged it into my computer and what I'm going to do is actually use my actual cord here because the Maker 3 machines don't work with our original Maker. So I'm just going to set up this new cord. Okay, so now I'm turning my machine on. So we're going to come up here and we're going to click the Explore machine. Now, can we go to the share screen real quick? Because I find myself struggling with this all the time. We have a lot of machines here. So be sure you select the right machine you're working with. Mm -hmm. So we're going to have to click Change on Canvas. We're going to click Yes, I want to cancel my cut. And we're going to go from Maker to Explore 3. Dun, 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 dun. And then click Make it again. And look, I have to move my layer because I had to cancel my cut. Move object, mat one. Now it moved, look, it moved my mats around. Is that not so funny? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's crazy. Mind of its own. Yeah, crazy. So we'll click continue. We're connecting with the USB. Y'all are the GOAT. I love, y'all are so fun. <laughs> Thank you so much. I forgot to share with y'all what we were even making. This is what we're <laughs> making today. I got so excited. Um, this is so fun. So this is what we're making today. Super These are awesome. great for packaging your yeah. craft items if you're planning to sell. Yeah. And you can resize them to fit your products. Like if mm -hmm. you're doing socks, if you're doing jewelry, if you're doing, yes, I mean, a lot it. of different things. Soaps could fit so in there. So much So what we're going to do, we're having to reboot our machine um, because it's new. Because you literally watched me unbox the machine. This, we're having to install some updates. So Sadie, let's show them what it looks like when we first install and update our machine. This is getting new firmware on our machine. If you look at the share back to the table, I'm gonna go over some of my favorite supplies. We are using the ATG Advanced Tape Glider. Um, this is my favorite way to do paper crafts. Um, it's super fun, it's fast, it's easy to use. You'll love it. This is um, a paper trimmer. This one's from Cricut. We've been testing some Fisker ones as well. Um, so you'll really enjoy all the differences that you have available with this. So this is super, super fun. There's another brand that we really like too, but y'all, we tried to find it online and they don't sell it. We found it on eBay for some like crazy mm. amount. Like I was like, this is crazy. Yeah, yeah. So um, you'll find your one that you love yes. too. Now we've linked some of um, our friend Ashley Falco's cardstock. Um, you can check this out, link down below. She has a lot of colors in both glitter. Shed proof glitter. Shed proof glitter. Shed proof glitter. That's why we're using it because it's, yeah. shed, it's shed proof. Super fun. So yeah, we have both of these available. Super awesome. We have the glitter. We're using a Maker's Learn um, X-Acto knife. And I love this craft paper right here. Like this is one of my favorite colors. Mm -hmm. So we're using that as well. So um, we're gonna use medium cardstock setting for our first mat. And what we're gonna do today is I'm gonna teach you how I use a scoring stylus and not a scoring wheel. And I like to use my bone folder sometimes to burnish paper onto the mat. Honestly, whatever's on hand, you guys. Yeah, I mean, your arm, I mean, whatever Before you got. Before I knew what a burnishing tool, I was using a credit card. You're awesome, you're so cool. <laughs> not here, but not like, here. Yeah. at home when I was out in the wild. Yes, at my out in the wild. <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna use medium cardstock. We're going to, it's gonna encourage us, so, when you have an explore machine, you have to use the scoring stylus. 
a lot of us here have a maker and you could use the scoring wheel but I still encourage you to use a scoring stylus. I think it's still an amazing, amazing tool. Mm -hmm. It's cheaper, it's easier and better to use. So look, take your scoring stylus, open clamp A, and we're just gonna pop it in. Slides Boom. right in. Close it, you're good to go. Now we're going to take our mat, we're gonna load this in, click load. I love the stylus because I don't have to switch it out. Yes, like if it you has use, its own clamp. Like when you use the maker, if you use an adaptive tool, which the adaptive tools are amazing, but right. it, they both use clamp A. So it, you, Cricut Design Space will prompt you to put your your scoring yes. wheel in and you put it in and it's like, okay, now put the fine point in and you're like, okay. Yeah. You know. So look, we've got the mat here. We've made sure our paper's on it. It's loaded. Now we can press the play button. So woohoo! It's gonna now start cutting. For a lot of you, this could be your first cut, which is awesome. If you don't have a bone folder, pick up a bone folder from like your local craft store. It's so much fun. And the ATG gun you can find on Amazon. It's from Scotch. Um, I wanna say $27 or so. I'm not sure, but you can also find it at Michael's Hobby Lobby. Okay, now we're gonna watch it cut. Christina, <gasps> these are Ashley Falco's papers. Love Ashley. Love it. Love, love, love. All right, so it's just cutting away. I'm gonna teach y'all some of my favorite hacks about paper too, because it's so good. Woo, no, no. Ah! This happens, y'all. Welcome to Real Life with Tanner. Welcome yep. to Real Life. Do we have another sheet of this? You we absolutely do. Thank you. And grab me a new mat too. I mean, if we're just asking for the world, this mat. What else? What, anything you need, <laughs> I got you. This is really interesting. So what, you'll, what you've noticed here is that the Cricut scored great. And then we got up to a corner and it just took the whole piece of paper. This happens sometimes, y'all. This is not anything to have drama about, get upset about, beat yourself up about. It will happen. Now, I want to blame today, not my burnishing. I think my burnishing was great. Uh, the mat just is a, like not sticky. Let me feel that one. Feel it, feel it. Like, oh yeah, this is better. Love it, love it, love it. So our mats have been loved on. Ugh, even though this mat looks to be dirtier, I think it happens. And I, what, what I want you to notice is I didn't get upset. I didn't get frustrated. Like. It's just a part of the fun, like literally. It's a part of the process, you all. It's part of it. But so. you know, that's why I love paper crafting because um, it's inexpensive if you mess up. Yeah. <laughs> you can just go grab another it's not sheet vinyl. of paper. Yeah. Right. I'm using the proper tools now. I grab my maker's glowing burnishing tool. So yay, I love it. So now, here, load this in again. I think it's really important that we don't beat ourselves up. I really want to encourage y'all not to beat yourself up. Um, when it comes to stuff like this. So I'm gonna select the first mat again. I'm gonna select medium cardstock. It was cutting gray. So now. It must have just got caught up or something. I think the, it was the mat was really not sticky. Yeah, that could very well be it. And also, if you are using glitter cardstock and then you put in a regular piece of cardstock and you yes. try to cut on glitter cardstock setting, it'll mess up yeah. your regular cardstock. So when we, after we cut this mat, we're gonna change out the settings to cut our glitter, which yeah. we're super excited. Which way do you fold the paper after scoring? So April, I'll share with you exactly how I like to score and things like that. Okay, it's scored. I love watching it score. I don't Me know, too. it's so satisfying. I love watching it cut everything. Yeah. Okay, here we go. Guys, this is perfect. Valentine's Day is coming up. Like um, Alicia already said, this would be great for the kids to do some type of little gift treats or anything like that. Look, now we can unload the mat. I wanna share with you all my favorite tip for cutting cardstock is how you peel it up because this really matters. So if I just rip this up, I would ruin the sheet so I couldn't use the rest of it. So go overhead with me. We're going to lay it flat. This is what I call going with gravity. We're gonna peel it back and it's gonna be flat. It's very intentional because then look, now I can take a piece of like I have this whole piece, I can take some scissors, trim off the excess, have this extra piece, mm -hmm. and it's laying flat. And then look at how flat my pieces are here. This we is love that. so good, so, so good. So that's awesome, I love it, love it, love it, love it. Um, and it's really, really awesome. So you'll see that this will be really fun to score and build, it's gonna be awesome and no problem whatsoever. So this is awesome. And then now we're gonna add our glitter do the same thing, but what we'll do now is we will go ahead 
and change the material after we get it ready to go. So I'm just gonna grab the burnishing tool. Lay this down flat. And this glitter paper feels so good. It's awesome. It and just notice feels good quality. It's not it's not going anywhere. Like it like the glitter is not going anywhere. Like it's no. amazing. <laughs> so yeah. We're gonna click browse all material. We're going to search for glitter and we'll click glitter cardstock and click done. Love it. All right, so, okay, my Cricut is saying it had a moment. It, <gasps> it literally was what is it red. <gasps> the red button of doom. Yeah. Y'all, what a great video for you guys to... Troubleshoot, yeah. yeah. I love it, I love it. This is how it is. I Like, in real life, y'all, I know we get on here and show y'all how to do stuff, but, like, really, on real life, so we Carol mess asked, up every day. Yeah, Carol asked if uh, Ashley's paper is solid core or white core. For the regular cardstock, it's solid core, which is super, super fun. The glitter, I believe, would have to be white core. So it's telling us to unload the material, which we did. I'm just gonna click done. And we're gonna relaunch this. Now I'm gonna have to try Ashley's paper. You will love it. We, I don't believe she mailed this to us. Like we literally just bought it. Yeah, we did. Um, we just bought a bunch of different we just colors. Love it. We've been testing a lot of different cardstock lately. All right, so glitter cardstock, press done. We're gonna load this in again. I'm not sure what entirely happened. It's weird because it didn't move the cardstock at all. Yeah. Like it's not like it got jammed. A lot of times when your paper gets jammed, you'll get the red it light of doom. It got jammed a little. Oh, maybe that's what happened. I'm gonna monitor it this time instead of just chat. <laughs> um, it. Jeanette wants to see the scoring tool once we're done. Okay. Um, the scoring I stylus is awesome. You'll really enjoy it. Yes, it's very handy. And so if you all have an Explore family, um, you'll have to use the stylus. The yep. maker, you can use the stylus or the Either adaptive one. tool, like the mm -hmm. scoring wheel, so. Oh, uh, it's really close to the edge of the paper. I think that's how it got hung. Oh, okay. Oh, and it's cutting a second line just to make sure it's cut perfect, which is awesome. Yes. Aw, oh, thank you. I totally believe that, Tanner. Thanks so much for the tutorials. Listen, we're here to serve. Thank you. So again, Flip that around back, peel this off. Notice how easy it cut. Dang. Like, that is awesome. So then we have these scrap pieces that we will keep for another project. So awesome. So here's what we're gonna do. For this layer, there's two score lines and it's hard to see them. So we just have to find them and just score. So then we can grab our bone folder, score. Look at that, it snaps into place. And then we wanna find our score line over here you'll see that it will just like snap into place pretty much. And then you grab it and score it. So that's awesome. So we've scored this, which is awesome. And then we're gonna grab our cardstock. So our cardstock here, you can see there's some like rounded edges. So the edges are harder to score, I will say. Um, but we're gonna start with any lines. So this line right here is a big one to score. So I like to just like let it kind of fall into place. And then as it falls into place, I like to score it. April's asking, you may need to clarify a little bit, April. Why does yeah, the paper yes, tear yeah. when folding at the score line? Sometimes you're using too thick of cardstock. Yes. I, that's be. when I would re realize it would to tear, like if I'm using too thick of cardstock. Mm -hmm. Okay, my lining here. Oh, there's our score line. Sometimes the lotting is a really big part of scoring and things like that. Yeah, it helps you find your lines. Yes. Um, Bobby O'Brien, I've never tried cutting hey, my Bobby. glitter upside down. Um, that is, we didn't do that today, um, but typically we'll put transfer tape onto our mat, yep. sticky side up. And then we'll put our glitter cardstock, the glitter side down on top of it. Mm -hmm. And then we'll cut the glitter from the back. Now, the glitter cardstock we use today is very fine and it's so, it's like almost a solid piece of cardstock. Yeah. Like, it doesn't feel textured like glitter right. would. Um, so we didn't have any issues today. Yes. So but, with the ATG gun, this is why I love it. So it's uh, the most adhesive for the, mo the best bang for your buck. Um, it does look aggressive, it's not, I promise. So then we're <laughs> gonna give two lines. And then we're gonna line up this. And once we're good, we can apply this down. 
you'll notice that it adheres really quickly. So we just applied this here, and now you can pop your box out. Notice I didn't even try to get these to fall in place yet because what I love is that they kind of just fall in place after you do the project. Like after you adhere that down, you'll, you'll see it's so much easier to get the score lines to do what they need to do. Um, so you can pop that one in, and then this last one, you just wanna find that line and just slowly, all this is when you slowly just kinda let it fall into place. And then I like to rub my finger around it just to make sure that I'm like, okay, it looks good, the edges aren't you know, too tight or anything like that. So that looks really, really good on this side. And then we'll go repeat. So where it has the little lip, it goes in first. Again, go around here. Super awesome. I love working with 80 pound cardstock for 3D projects. Like this cardstock is really good for 3D. That's why we're featuring it today because I think you'll be really, really impressed with it. So look, now we have this. So what we'll do next is we'll be able to add this and you can use an ATG gun or you can use a hot glue gun. I'm gonna use ATG today just to make it really, really simple. Um, so I'm just gonna add some, like three lines here and see if that will work. So there we have it. I'm going to make sure this is looking good. Right up here, make sure it's tight. Always make sure it's tight. Okay, flip it around back and then look at this. Love that. Ta -da! So cute. Look at it. Oh my gosh, it's looking so good. I love it. And then here's what we're going to be able to do. Look, we've already cut out one of these little crickets. You can add an area to add a hole to have the cricket cut it. Um, or you could do, you know, just anything, anything that you want. You could poke a hole out yourself. This you would be could... a great spot for you to plug your logo in if yes, you're selling items. Exactly, this exactly, is a great exactly. for branding, yeah. I think. So I'm just going to use this little tool, I think. This is a, I don't really know what this tool is, but you just need like a little tiny hole um, so you can poke that through. That's a paper quiller. Love it. I love using paper quillers to poke <laughs> holes. I don't know if you've ever done that. <laughs> no, it's but one that's of my a favorite. good idea. It's one of my favorite ways. Um, you're just gonna grab some twine and then I'm going to, this is when it gets fun because you're like, how am I gonna throw this through? Well, you just wanna keep it real tight. Some people, I like to do a fresh cut, so I'm gonna grab a pair of scissors. And this project is really simple, y'all. Like, this is not hard at all. This is one of the new Makers Learn pair of scissors. You cut it at an angle. I love those scissors. Love them. They're so sharp. Yeah. Um, and then you can kind of just pull it through. Ta-da! Okay. Now I'm going to buy Alicia to come over and tie a bow because I'm like, Y'all, I did, I did I'm a I'm a lot. designated bow maker. <laughs> we got the bow maker. I got it on for you. Thank you. <laughs> Let's see. Give us your bow tips because you just taught a class on this, right? I did. Okay. You're amazing. Okay. Where can they get your bow class? Um, it's on the channel and it has four presents and it has, we actually do five bows in the video. Yeah. Um, so, and I think we do something simple like this and actually Tanner, I would put this on after I tie my bow. No way. Yeah. So Stop it. what I would do, I'm going to, I'm going to start from the underneath. So oh. I've got some extra, mm -hmm. I'm going to like sit this guy kind of on top mm -hmm. and I'm just going to go ahead and give myself, I probably got way more extra than I need sure. here. Sure. I and mean, there's a lot. So you can see I've got excess. All right, what I'm gonna do next is I'm going to just tie this. Okay, like, I can do that. Yeah, that's basic, not hard. that's easy, right? Uh, am I tying my shoes? Uh, basically. No way! Yeah, yeah. you're Stop basically it. tying good your luck, shoes. Good luck getting that back on there. Okay, so the what Lord I would help do. Me. So, <laughs> so what I would do here, <laughs> the Lord did help you. What on I, earth? I told you, honey, uh, I prayed. Okay, so what I would do I here. Cut a fresh, cut a fresh little, I, I did cut a little fresh. Hold on, let me just You're make, making the whole bigger. I need it to be bigger. I need to, I need to get I that don't string know. in there. I was able to get it in. Okay, <laughs> you're just fancy like that. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I'm kidding. Alicia can totally do this. Okay, here we go. Focus. I did not feed it, feed it through the back. I need to, I want you to feed it through the back mm -hmm. so You're that it, it sits facing forward. Alicia did it. <gasps> no, oh. I didn't, Tanner. We'll just make your hole a little bigger. Mm. Okay, I'm going to, I want you cut all to, off. yeah, I'm going to yeah. cut this off because I want mm. you to Keep see. Keep it tight. I, yeah, the angle is where it's at. The you angle know. You know. really is going to help. Yes. Look at this, y'all. This is like a double twine, so mm -hmm. it doesn't want to be nice mm -hmm. to me right now. Mm-hmm. 
Come on through, Becky. Oh. The cricket can also cut this for y'all, just just in case you're forgetting. Don't be like us. We're in this just aspect. silly. Okay. <gasps> she did it. All right. She, I knew it. I had so to we went through from the back. I'm just gonna slide this on. Okay. And kind of put it in the center where yes. I would want it in its final destination. I'm gonna Love make that. a loop, make okay. a rabbit ear. <gasps> this is like tying a shoe. It's just like tying a shoe. <laughs> make a rabbit ear, swing it around. That's tying a shoe. And then you're just literally. Oh, maybe I could have done this. You could have done you're it. You're awesome. You totally could have. You're awesome. And then you just trim your tails. Love it. And that's it. And I just think these would be really cute with your we, logo. We need to make a few of these for when we, like, if we ever start mailing out, like, real gift cards like Amazon or Starbucks <gasps> and things like that. That because, would like, be this cute. This would be great. So you could do this with your very own logo. You could do this with your favicon. Anything like that, you will be able to feature your very own business, which is super fun. Um, but you could also add, like, a little sentiment, like, thinking of you or do whatever you want. That is a print and cut training. <laughs>